Lace up those boots and stretch those glutes. It's time for Wrestling Compadres. With me, Scott Narver. And me, Jake Lloyd Bacon. Oh, have we got a hell of a show for you. We escaped the Elimination Chamber. Thanks to Almost, you know, for ripping out the plexiglass. There's no L in his name. Allowing us to do so. It's just, oh, there's no L. You said almost again. Oh, sorry. Lomos. Uh, thanks to Lomos for getting us out of there. And the Lomination uh, Lamber uh, Tal- was great. Talmos. That's a Talmos because he's tall. Yeah. And he follows the rules when there's no rules, even though he doesn't follow the rules, which is what I like about him. Consistency. So, yeah. That's all you can ask for. He's a good hearted rage-filled man and that's the kind of podcast we bring to you this week good-hearted and rage-filled wow accurate we're gonna be talking about wrestling this week we're gonna talk about wwe stuff we're gonna be talking about uh elimination chamber did as you, well as AEW, you, and also did you just say we're gonna talk about wrestling this week is that what you just said <laughs> is that how you started that probably all right that's fair i mean it's a fair it's a fair are description. we not no, you know what? You're right. I, I apologize for interrupting. Continue. I'm treating it as though someone's listening to this for the first time ever. Oh. They're like, they're like oh, I tried all the other ones. I guess I'll try this one. If only it had Slamcast in the title. What's with this wrestling compadres? What do they talk about? What are they even friends? <laughs> Maybe. Everything's debatable with this, but all the all relationships are falling apart in the pandemic. Jake, how are you? Are you fine? Are you okay? I'm 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 all right. You got? Are you rocking a a Randy Orton shirt? Is that what is that what you're rocking today? Oh my god! All I see no. is the top half. Oh, it's an Austin three sixteen. See, I'm sorry, I didn't see the bottom. All I saw was the, a little uh, bone snake eyes. That's a rattlesnake, not a viper. Oh, oh god, I'm sorry, what I don't know. Idiot. I don't know the bone differentiations between, uh, you know, vipers and constrictors. Yeah, that's look, that's a lot of this business, right? You know, you got to get in there. You got to learn your snakes. Wait, isn't a rat? Hang on a second. Isn't a rattlesnake a viper? Because vipers are all venomous snakes and a rattlesnake is indeed a viper. It has a rattle. But it's but it's still poisonous. It's a viper. It's not a constrictor. It's not it doesn't squeeze its prey to death. It bites its prey and then it poisons it to death. Vipers hear voices in their head. Oh, and and they the rattlesnake on your shirt, he's all made of they bones. They understand. So all the voices in his head just echo and, and about. He can't hear any of them. He's got mm-hmm. no skin. All right. And rattlesnakes have broken necks. So <laughs> I get it. Got it. And broken skulls, apparently. They got a lot of broken things. <laughs> Do you ever think, you think Jake the Snake ever thought to put Stone Cold in a sack? Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Or Randy Orton in a sack. Either way, uh, that's that's what wrestling's all about these days. Kidnappings. Kidnappings and putting people in a sack and dragging them around. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the it's the latest and greatest thing. So let's get all to it with Slamcast News. Signings, signings, signings. Everybody's getting scooped up. Free agents are a thing of the past, people. And uh, WWE. And, and considering just uh, a year ago, WWE fired 700 people, they got plenty of spots open. Yeah, well, these people are now going to work for half the peanuts, so they'll take whatever they can get. Fantastic. So, uh, last week, we knew of uh, LA Knight, uh, is the stupid name he's been bestowed with uh but that's eli drake Mm -hmm. sean ricker in case you're a newer fan that's like checking back in but this week confirmed taya valkyrie aqa lacey ryan no relation to joey ryan uh priscilla kelly alana black cameron brene avery taylor carissa rivera bronson rick steiner which is rick steiner's (laughs) son never knew that that was the, the real last name Rex Steiner? Rex Steiner? I think I it's Rex. I think it's Rex Steiner. Rex Steiner. Uh, Parker Boudreaux, Matrick Belton. That seems like a typo. <laughs> that Anthony seems like, Henry. Wait a minute. Is Mickey? Did Mickey Bell write this? 
<laughs> Anthony Matrick, Henry. Matrick Belton? Come on now. Harlem Bravado, Christian Casanova, Blake Christian. Oh. When he's going to lose it there. Yeah. Uh, Drew Casper and Joe Ariola. I'm excited <laughs> for Joe Ariola. All right. Can I say, I don't know most of these people. And it doesn't matter because they're all going to have new names next week. Well, no, Joe Ariola, fight it. Tooth and nail. <laughs> Keep it. Keep also, that fucking should Mi- name. Should Mickey Bell's new uh, retribution name be Matrick Belton? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see Matrick Belton first before we uh, sure. bestow that name upon him. Because that might be real mean. I think and um, there might be. So there are some names here that I feel like I know. Like I, Priscilla Kelly sounds very familiar. I might know them, but not realize that I'm familiar with them. It's that kind of thing where there's a billion fucking people. But I sure. do feel like at least of this class, the big, the head of class, the big name is Ty, a Ty Valkyrie. Uh, yeah, there was Magic rumors. Belton. We'll say again. Yeah, Magic Belton, right? Oh, <laughs> um, but so this is the thing, dude. Like, I kind of feel like putting Taya in NXT. Ty is one of those few people who I'm saying I think like fuck, don't fuck NXT. Like just. Put her with her husband and the Miz on the main roster, and just um, you immediately have a spot for her. You immediately like we know that the chemistry will work. Like she's she's very good at being that obnoxious character. Like just make her whatever you're gonna call her because she's gonna get some different name, I'm sure. And just like this seems, I feel like I want her to go right to the main roster. I don't want her to go to NXT. I would 100% agree with you had I not seen what I had seen in the past couple of years in Impact Wrestling with her. I think Which, there needs to be a little bit of like just reestablishing, re, re, re shedding of some things and going like, okay, let's get you up to speed on how we do things here. Got it. Shedding skin and like it, a snake. I see we have a theme for the episode. Oh, shit. Yeah. We did it. We did it, Scott. But yeah, I, I, I think um, very soon. I think that I yes she she absolutely fits with that group and I say along with that get Maurice in there too yeah yeah it's fantastic get them all in there be be all super obnoxious but that's not all the signings folks ROH officially signs EC3 no details on the contract situation if it's for a multi year or a year but he's he's officially with them now all right then uh, and then also in uh, rather. Large news. AEW signs Paul White. Yeah, uh, it's the other show. There's there's so many. Uh, uh, he's going to be a commentator, so, well, it's the talk show. All right. I like that. That's good. Uh, a, a huge cry online for him to be called Titan, which I thought was brilliant. I love that. Uh, AEW announced on Wednesday night that White has signed a long-term deal with the company who stated that White will have an extensive role with AEW. In addition to returning to the ring, White will be a commentator for AEW's new show, AEW Dark Elevation. Elevation is going to air on AEW's YouTube channel at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays. New show is taking place in addition to AEW Dark, which will still air on Tuesdays. Uh, He said, it's been amazing to watch what AEW has built in just a couple of years. Uh, AEW Dark is an incredible platform to hone the skills of up and coming wrestlers, but I also love that AEW established talent can build on their own personalities and showcase themselves in new ways on Dark. It's no exaggeration when they say AEW is boundless. Uh, The thing that stood out there to me is as well as returning to the ring that that is surprising. I thought that this was strictly a like, yeah, he's going to commentate. He's going to work backstage. But uh, that's interesting that he's going to be, or is it going to be one of those things where he's returning to the ring in the same way that Sting has returned to the ring thus far? Well, did you think that Big Show had retired? Um, no, I just didn't think that they that they were going to be using him as a competitor. That's all. I just thought this was a different position. That's all. Oh, I mean, to me, it's a no brainer. Anyway, anybody that comes in, because you know yeah. my motto: wrestlers never retire. Of course, so, yeah. of course, he's also going to wrestle. I think he's going to be very select in what he does. I think he's going to do big time matches, which we're going to get into. I'm going to get into that later when we do our AEW breakdown of like what I foresee this plan oh, okay. That's to be. Fun. Yeah, I'm um, not, so here's a thing that I'm curious to chat about: is I kind of assume that 
the second he decided to hang it up in the ring, he was going to be the Hall of Famer head of the class for that year. I felt like WWE was going to like because he's such a WWE guy like he's got fucking the big show like sitcom on Netflix and all these like he seems canceled. To be like, sure, but uh, but it's still he's still a huge I feel like, and I, I, I'm trying to not make big jokes here, <laughs> but they're just, they're falling out of me accidentally. He's, sure. He's, he's a person who even people who don't watch wrestling know who he is. Even if they might not necessarily know his name, they see him and they go, oh yeah, that's the, that's the wrestler guys. Oh, I've that's seen, Captain Insano. I've seen him in a movie. Sure. Yeah. I've seen him in a movie or I've seen him. Uh, I remember him on SNL all those years ago or, or whatever. I feel like he's, you know, he's a big, he's a big part of the show. So I'm trying to get at Jake. He had his Netflix show, the big show show, which WWE couldn't even keep going or put it on their network or even on Peacock. So why not leave, go to Cody and go, Hey, you got a show called go big show. Huh? Uh, huh? I feel like that's what started this whole thing. I feel like when the go big show started and we were like, Oh, they're going to do something with the big show from WWE. And it, and it was like, no, has nothing to do with that person. He got all, he got like all upset about it. <laughs> and he was like, Hey Cody, what the fuck? I know Snoop. Snoop and I go way back. It's like a run for us run scenario where it's like, go big show. Okay, I will. Bye. <laughs> oh, huh? no. Wait, what? That's what happened is he heard people in the WWE offices talking about go big show, thought he was getting fired. He thought it was like rumors, like running around the office coolers and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I'll show them. I'll beat them to it. Poor guy. I th- look. Great, great scenario. I'm excited that he's excited. I think there's really cool stuff here. I I will address the one thing I've seen a little bit in our Discord and other spots. Like, and as you say, like he's such a WWE guy. It's like, yeah, yeah, but this is all territory stuff. Like, this is how it's supposed to be. People come and go. He was a WCW guy before anything, right? Uh, and then it's yeah, go shake things up, go play, be somewhere else. Of all people that need something refreshing and needs to do anything else, he Paul White is the prime candidate, but. I feel bad for one person in all of this. There's one person that's going to really suffer. Because Big Show's obvious main new job in all this is a commentator, right? Right. We've seen what Big Show does when he gets to the mic and he talks and he gets excited. It's just pools of drool that fall out of his mouth. Yeah, drool. That guy that has to. Yeah, that guy that has to deal with his headset and that mic. Right. And, and replace the little filters and stuff. That's that that poor bastard. He's going to have his own job. Uh, there's going to there's going to be a new job created in AEW called the spit mopper. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the they're going to call him the PW spit mopper. <laughs> By the way, AEW, I am unemployed. So let's put that out there. <laughs> Scott Narver for spit mopper. Narver for spit mopper. Hashtag Narver for spit mopper. You, you guys. Look, if you had two librarians, you can afford one spit mopper, AW. That's all I'm saying. And they might need to because... <laughs> Jake, <laughs> come on, let's go. I mean, listen. Jake's got standards, though. I don't know. Um, They're lowering. <laughs> <laughs> They're changing. 2020 as a year has changed my both uh, standards and expectations. Well, it sounds like your heart is injured as well as uh, some injuries that we unfortunately are uh, announcing here. Uh, There's a there's a slew of them going around right now. Uh, Anna Jay is estimated to be out of six uh, to 12 months due to an injured shoulder that requires surgery. Oh, that sucks. She was just getting she was barely given birth to. I feel like she was just starting to even be remotely a character on the program. I'm hoping they can still maintain the character in some fashion, you know, did, with videos and just doing yeah, things. Of, they, uh, they did it with uh, Britt Baker and, you know, like in the fucking chair and yeah. shit. But do we know how she, was she injured in a match or was this like one of those things that she just needed a surgery for a while and she decided to get it now? During training, because she was supposed oh, to be yeah. within the, the tournament and she had to be pulled from it. And she had stated, I'm super upset about this. All I can do now is put in the work to come back stronger. Thanks for all the love and support, everyone. It means a lot to me. So, yes, if you're, you know, want to share more love, obviously send it towards Anna Jay. She's looking for it, and it, it's always good. Uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling reported that uh, Hiromu Takahashi will be out for an estimated six months due to, due to a torn left pectoral. Um, so 
He's out. And then Tetsuya Naito. Don't worry. It's not an eye injury, everybody. But uh, he has a knee injury uh, that he got in a tag match on the February 16th Road to Castle uh, show. And he's not wrestled since. So he's out for a while. And then also Impact Wrestling's Heath is undergoing surgery. That's We all know him as Heath Slater. Uh, he's been getting a lot of messages, texts, and tweets about uh, everything and saying, hey, where are you at? What are you doing? What's happening? Are you hurt? Uh, he writes, have you had uh, surgeries? What's going on? So three different doctors tell him to go three different ways with this. He finally found a doctor that can do everything all at once. It's taken over three months to find this doctor. And yes, it's been an up and down roller coaster ride of crap. And so finally found the doctor that can do all of my surgeries. I have a sports hernia on the left side of my pubic bone, Oof. another hernia on the right side that I don't even know the name of it. Oh, geez. My abductor muscle is actually ripped off the bone, has to get resutured, and I have a rip in my abdomen wall on both sides. God so damn. A, little, a little bit of a mess. <laughs> so my spirits Christ. are still high. I'm going to be out for a little while. My surgery is, thank God, March 1st. So after March 1st, it's going to be the road to recovery. So yeah, keep me in your prayers, everybody. We, we've been joking about snakes. It, it feels like he might be a snake with how many bones are not currently working in his body. He just tubes himself what around. The fuck? He's just a danger. Like I, ho- I hope that message was dictated and then written by <laughs> someone else. Because right. I mean, you talked about like, uh, you know... It, <sighs> The other day, your your neck was a little messed up. You've yep. had the case of times like I've had those things too, where just something happens and you go, oh, "I don't." My one thing doesn't feel so good. Right. He's got fucking two hernias, a hole in his abdomen. What the shit? Like ninety percent of his body isn't working. Currently. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, that sucks. Well, Heath, just Heath. It doesn't work as one name. It's just not one of those names that works with just one name. Anyways, Heath, mm-hmm. I uh, I do hope that uh, that he gets better soon because I still feel like he's got a he's got a bright future ahead of him in this industry. Heath slated for surgery is what you can call oh, him at this point. Oh, I see what you did there. All right, this is the yin and yang of news, everybody. So first, let's start with the best. Let's start with the best thing ever. It is an ending because Lars Sullivan training in boxing, hoping to do bare knuckle fighting. Yes. And uh, <laughs> the 32 year old Dylan Miley uh, was reported by the Wrestling Observer Newsletter uh, that uh, age is not on the side, but he's still planning on competing at some point at well over 300 pounds. Any competition would be in a super heavyweight class unless he plans on dropping a lot of weight. Bare knuckle fighting that's right he doesn't need gloves he doesn't need protection to get his hands on you Lars Sullivan knows exactly how to get in that fight and use his hands to the best of his ability to to put you out I I don't even know how to add to that (laughs) oh boy this guy does he is he aware is he just (laughs) Making career choices for my amusement. So, all right. On a on a slightly more serious note, fucking bare knuckle fighting is like a thing still. Like that's a thing that's like is so he's not training to do MMA, right? He's just training to do. He's just training to punch people on the. There's it's. I like that. There's no. It's not like for a company or an organization. It's like no, no. He's just training to punch people. <laughs> well. It- in reality, like the the thing is with MMA, like the gloves they wear is right. basically to prevent you from breaking your own hand, right. punching someone in the face. So and you're not doing a whole lot otherwise. It's a it's a cleaner knockout overall rather than a boxing glove sure. that's rattling your brain. Well, they also, but isn't there also a debate on whether or not that also allows people just to punch harder, which is making it more dangerous than if they were to not wear gloves? then likely they wouldn't be punching so hard because they would be breaking their own hands. And isn't that safer for the other person? That is that is currently what's being studied. Yeah. So right now I go with, yeah, just no gloves, <laughs> but all love. Just knock him out. And uh, God, I hope he, I hope he gets a like a training video or something documenting him so working with his bare knuckles. Here's the thing is when, if, when this doesn't work out and he comes back to wrestling, you know how a lot of times some wrestlers, they take like, 
they they kind of take another move that already exists and they slightly change the name of it a little bit. Yeah. Right. So, for example, John Cena, instead of the F5, he called it the FU. Right. So I have a feeling that Lars Sullivan's eventually going to come back to, to wrestling and he's going he's gonna to do John Cena's uh, little, you know, his punch that he does. Well, the opponent's on the ground. He's going to call it the bare knuckle shuffle. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. And and That's they also good. might they also might nickname him the bear, but instead of E A R, it's B A R E. The bear knuckle shuffler. I am all for this, and I don't think he's going to punch him in the in the top of the head either. I mean, that would be incredibly painful. <laughs> so, like I said, the yin and yang uh with this, I saw this just as we before we start recording, I don't even know if Jake knows about this yet. Yeah, uh, I just read the first line and legitimately uh, was very shocked. Yeah, I'm. I am not feeling good. I am very this sad is, with this news. This is a uh, Joseph Joseph Hudson, known as both Josephus and the Question Mark in the National Wrestling Alliance, has passed away. Ugh. NWA President Billy Corgan announced the death on his Instagram account, writing the following. It's with a heavy heart that I share that my friend and my brother in wrestling, Joseph Hudson, has passed away suddenly from a as yet undiagnosed medical issue. Mm. NWA fans would know him as Josephus as well as the question mark, or thanks to the great fans at GPB Studios in Atlanta. Joseph was able to receive the kind of support in the ring he'd always dreamt of. He is survived by a young son whom he loved dearly. And if anything would pain him about leaving this earth, it would be not being able to be there for his boy. R.A.P. Joseph, love to you and Godspeed. Ah, uh, that's this is terrible. Yeah, um, there's some other uh, Dutch Mantel wrote a little bit. Um, he wrote that it's believed that he either suffered a stroke or an aneurysm. Um, so you know we'll keep an eye out on what it is, but. I, I I implore if you had never watched NWA Power, go watch. Now's the time to watch. This guy was so fun. We talked about him yeah. every him, time. Every time we broke down the show with whatever we're talking about, it's like, ah, this wrestling is this, this. But he was always yeah, amazing we, and so good. We never disagreed on how fantastic both Josephus and the question mark are. And the fact that one dude could be actively portraying two different characters that is so mm-hmm. and by the way the question mark just being josephus with a mask on with no other changes like so clearly josephus i remember when it started you were like oh i don't think that's him and then you're like wait never mind i paid attention I, to the body size well i i, I initially thought like yeah. no it's got to be somebody right. else and i thought there was something about either the body type or the beard or i was like no i i think it's somebody else that looks clearly like him but but it yeah. was so fun to to guess for that week. Yeah, but and he, was he so made good. so much out of a such a one note character of the question mark. And the he speaks the work he did with deep. Aaron Stevens, like mm-hmm. the two of them together, oh, were just exceptional. Adding such variety to a, a variety wrestling show yeah. and what is a pretty straight laced wrestling show being a fun character and it still fits and it you know, works. There's something to, to to be said about the fact that he was sort of parodying or not parodying, but like paying homage to the more corny characters of yesteryear professional wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was doing it with a level of authenticity that just made it work as a character that we yes. were all in. Like it wasn't it wasn't the equivalent of like, you know. Uh, somebody dressing up like Hogan and doing a Hogan impression as much as it was like, Hey, do you remember these sorts of things from 30 to 40 years ago? Well, let I'm doing that right now and I'm doing it uh, without irony and just exactly as it would have been done then. And it fucking totally worked. Yeah. All this shit with karate. karate. Oh, uh, the whole audience cheering for question mark when he was supposed to be a bad guy and everybody else in the ring is like, what the hell is going on? The, the, I mean, talk and, about some hot tags. Yeah, just just so fun. Again, NWA power. If you've been putting it off, now's the time. It's really all- celebrate this guy's life uh, yeah. and what he got to do and really do something. And it's obviously a shame with the pandemic that we could have seen more. Yeah. But uh, we got what we got. And uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, to his friends and family, like all the best. And that's just the worst. So that's Lamcast News. All right. It's the Wednesday night kidnappings. Let's break it down. Let's look at AEW Dynamite first off. Um, I thought this was a step up again for their show overall. It seems like there's somebody week from week going like, I'm going to take it serious. Eh, I'm going to go a little goofy. And then <laughs> All right. Miro shows up and does whatever the fuck he wants. So um, let's talk about Ryan Nemeth, Hollywood hunk versus John Moxley opening match. And uh, we even got to hear from Ryan Nemeth in an yeah. opening promo. Yeah, being super smarmy. I, I, you know what? I feel like Ryan Nemeth right now is doing a little of the question mark bit. He is. He's very much channeling the wrestlers from yesteryear. It feels. Yeah, I'm. The, I'm this cocky guy. Uh, like he's. He's just taking his basic what we know about him. He's the Hollywood hunk, and <laughs> right. hey, I got this. I got this match, and I'm going to be a big star. And you know what? I think I'm going to book it. Like just using right. All that's there, not going extravagant, not doing anything, but a little personality that we see outside of that. And then uh, having just a, a really solid match where he's going up against the former champ, gets taken out. And uh, the girls had walked in on this one. So when they saw Moxley do the uh, the paradigm shift, they, they there was a reaction of, wow. oh my God, is that guy, is he going to be able to wrestle again? Wow. He just dropped him on his head. He just dropped him on his head. So, so they, it was sold well for the youngins. Sold very well for the youngins. And then they proceeded to, I believe they said, Moxley looks like a gym teacher that's disappointed at you when he sat AC Slater style in a chair doing <laughs> his uh, promo. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, it, so Alexandra watched AEW with me today for the maybe the first time almost in its entirety. Not all of it, but most of it. She's not a fan of it. She thinks that AEW is terrible. Like she's just not invested in any of the characters. She thinks the product feels weird or whatever. Um, but she did say like, she said something similar about John Moxley. She's like, John Moxley, it doesn't matter whether he was like Dean Ambrose, whether he was in the shield or just Dean or now these John Moxley, or if he's in his trunks or if he's in these long pants. Cause he was wearing like, it just looked like he was wearing like jeans, <laughs> like loose baggy pants or something today. Like I thought like, like shield tactical pants yeah, without okay. the without the pockets. Yeah, maybe that's what they were. Yeah, they were like a they were like tactical pants or something. But she was just like, yeah, he looks, he just looks like at that guy that guy in the bar, who's nobody has a problem with yet. He's still trying to start a fight. I was like, you know what? That's very fair. I was like, it's very very fair. And then I said to her, I was like, I was like, I feel like uh, that's exactly what they used to say about Roddy Piper. And uh, and she was like, oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah, which. Uh... I think works for him, but, uh, you know, he's talking about the, the match that we did not discuss last week. I was kind of curious if I didn't know if you gotten that far and I was like, this was a weird test to see like, is Jake going to bring this up? What, what, but you know, the pay-per-view match they have coming up, right? Between the, uh, between Moxley and, uh, Omega, uh, Omega and the, the, bar the barbed wire explosion chamber match vengeance day. Sort of. Yeah. 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 So yeah, they're going to do one of those. Yeah. And uh, they're they're really painting a picture here. Moxley's painting one that people can understand, and Omega's doing some sort of Picasso thing. Well, uh, the there you go. Maybe, huh? maybe technically, what he's saying makes sense, but you can't hear it off uh, over all the grinding. <laughs> one take, one take. That's all Omega and Callus need. Oh, not the production crew, mind you. They're probably going like, hey, OK, so when we did this segment and we just filmed you, you know, all the 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 metal working that everyone's doing with the machines. Yeah, they started it when you weren't done. So we didn't hear any of that stuff. Cal's like, uh, I work at Impact Wrestling. I think I know what works. We're good. <laughs> I like Kenny Omega going like I work. Da, at da, 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 da. <laughs> I like that. That's his barometer. Like, listen, you don't know who I am. I work at Impact Wrestling. I work at the highest rated Canadian television show in all of Anthem Sports. Uh, I think I know a thing or two. <laughs> I'll have about. you know. I'll have you know I work for Impact Wrestling. There's a shirt. He's out of his fucking mind. Like, he just... He's out of his fucking he, element. Out of his league. But he's he's clearly... He's 
Kenny and Callis have convinced all the the higher ups at AEW to go like, no, 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 you should have us on TV. That's a good idea. And they go, okay, well, you go film your stuff and just send it to us, and that's fine. I have no yeah. idea. That was that was one of those segments you just got to see it to believe it of how terrible it is that makes the air and worth Alex Marvez showing up going like I don't have a microphone but I'm dressed for work <laughs> right so uh, that's a thing um, and with that Miro also doing dumb shit what like what is happening he's trying Miro. so desperately to be funny and he's failing over and over again calling him charles the butler and saying like 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 none of this is working like literally none of it it's not even like okay like we get it but it's this wonky thing literally nothing is working here this is a complete and utter failure this is that Britt baker tv show from a few fucking weeks ago yeah so he in a sit-down interview with shivani who who gives it a good start sure i feel like shivani gives it that good like i'm uncomfortable I'm not comfortable doing this interview right now. So setting a scene to give them something to go off of. Right. right. And uh, we have Kip Sabian talking and we have uh, Miro talking and Penelope Ford still is not allowed to speak anymore. She's there. She just is not, she can't be anything anymore. So if you think women's wrestling at an hour and 20 is bad, just Penelope just being a mute is worse. <laughs> um, Miro does the stuff of like, you know, Orange Cassidy, I'm going to beat you. I hate you. And you did this and you did that. But uh, but not but not Charles. I like Charles. He's a good butler. He did all these things for me he's, that we never saw on television. detail oriented, he says. Yeah, he did all these. He's a, such a good butler that they never bothered to air. He didn't film it and say, put this on TV so people will understand why I like him. Because if you did that, maybe we could at least buy into the funny but you inventing something that doesn't exist doesn't make it funny. And he didn't even so, like, it would have been one thing if he elaborated even slightly on things that he did, even if we didn't see it even. So yes, we didn't see any of it with so yes. right there again, total failure. But if he said, you have no idea how much he saved me on my tax returns this year. You like give us fine details on things he did for you. Like my suits were never cleaner. He cleaned all of my suits. And you know what he did? He used the little Tide pens. I love those little Tide pens. He went out of his way to buy extra Tide pens. Like come up with some fine details to at least Tony, sell us. Tony, look at this shirt. I had guacamole all over it. <laughs> yeah. Anything. Fucking anything. Ch- that's Charles cheating, took by the care way. of it. That's there just, is no guacamole. By the way, guacamole, that's just a comedy cheating word. Like you can't you can't say guacamole. That's that's cheating in comedy. Just horseradish. <laughs> there was horseradish all over this shirt. Oh, it's just he's just fucking terrible. <laughs> he yeah, Remember when we were all excited he, that he left the <laughs> WWE and we were like, yay, he's gonna be able to do he's gonna be able to be himself now. Oh boy. He thought he thought it was great, but you know what? I will still take Miro's saying dumb shit that I don't know what he's gonna say and being awful over anybody else scripting someone to a point where I go, I don't, I don't want to know anything that you have to say and fast forward. So All right. good. I know he's there and he's doing his thing. That's fine. Uh, I hope Paul White does not have the same diseased <laughs> brain that Miro does for comedy. Um, let's see what else we have here. We had the uh, main event was for a spot in the face of the revolution ladder match, which was Lance Archer, Lance Archer versus Ray Phoenix. So, um, man, this was an insanely good match. This was probably my favorite Lance Archer match I've seen. But mm-hmm. again, I don't care about either of these two dudes. So there's a little bit of that. Pro- like, I still think that Archer now is a baby face is not doesn't work for him. Uh, Archer has a little bit of the Braun Strowman thing, I feel. Where like I don't want to root for the dude who should have no problem beating anybody ever. Like if you're telling me he's this ultimate stop, like unstoppable force, like then okay, cool. It's the Superman problem. <laughs> like why, why am I cheering for the guy who nobody can kill? Um, but I will say like the fucking match was great. I feel like I mentioned a little bit on the pre-show this week. Like I feel like this week was a week across every company of really good matches that I have no emotional attachment to like, but there were some fucking great wrestling matches on TV. And this was definitely one of them. I always care about Phoenix. I always like that dude. He's yeah. just, he's just got that 
part of him where I go, I want him to win. I'll, he's so amazing and so great. I want to just see him propel forward, uh, but he'll just propel himself forward regardless and land on the barricade on his ass. And just, right. That one that he did was crazy. Um, I agree with a fair amount of what you said about Lance Archer. I fucking love Superman, so I disagree there. But <laughs> I think Archer needs some mic time. Jake Roberts needs some pre-taped mic time right. to explain this next journey that Archer's taking. Sure. If he's fighting for the people, if he's fighting for this, like why why is he connecting with these people now? Is it because of his friend Brody Lee passed and right. he dressed as him during the show that it's like, I see what I was doing was wrong. I was bullying people. I was doing Maybe, this. Yeah. I like hurting people. I'm the murder hawk monster, but you ring the bell, I'll murder that guy. You also, but everybody also, else in between. You also have commentary putting over uh, Jake the Snake as this great heel. There was a few moments where they were like, oh, you know, uh, the ref didn't see it, getting away with something, you know, underhanded tactics. Or like, And they would mention like, ah, that's, that's a long, big part of Jake's career. Like, okay, but he's a good guy now. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. Kinda, kinda. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 waddling his way over to Phoenix. Look out! Listen, he's definitely making sure that nobody's getting off in that ring every night. Nobody's God busting me. a nut in that ring. That Murdoch, Murdoch monster needs a bare knuckle fighter in his quarter. Is what oh, I'd say. But oh man! All right, I'll take it. Match. Um. Anything you want to discuss before right, I get to I'm, my favorite moment gonna, of this yeah, show? Yeah, I'm going to stick with bad shit because that way we can end on high notes. Um, okay. Fucking, th- yeah. like, so I I am, man, I think I'm officially Team Scott Narver on not liking the Young Bucks as much as I used to. Oh my God, they're just so annoying now. They're, they're, <laughs> they're irritating to me. So this whole thing I'm confused about because I feel like not that long ago, And I know every week I say this and every week it's clear that I'm just not watching I'm not paying attention enough to the product. And I own that. I own that I'm not paying attention to the product, but it does. I'll explain it to him, everybody. Don't worry. (laughs) Thanks. But it does feel like not that long ago, the young bucks were, they turned heel and we all were supposed to boo them and we're not supposed to like them. And then, uh, the heel faction in inner circle took on the biggest heel in the company, the guy that we're supposed to hate more than anybody, MJF. But now, because they're together, it's kind of enjoyable to us, and so maybe we're kind of liking them, but it's only because they're fun heels, even though we're still supposed to boo them. But since they won the number one contendership now, it's it like a de factoid. All right, the forget everything that's been done by the Young Bucks over the recent weeks. Now, they're the baby faces because the other guys did something to their parents, to their dad. And this just, it feels to me like this is an idea that they almost put on being the elite because it felt as bad as those shows are. And they somehow decided to put it on the main show. Them showing the, taking pictures with their family backstage. Fine. That's great. That's a good way to reestablish that they're nice guys. Oh, they have parents and they're proud of them. Thanks for finally coming to the fucking shows, yeah. dad. We've been yeah. doing this for over a year. Hey, your you- face is on a truck. Yeah. I'm so proud of you boys. Really? That's what did it? <laughs> you know how long it's that the, truck's I been mean, around? I know he's Steven Seagal dad there has been uh, around a lot longer and going into their stuff, but he he's really giving off Mrs. Dad vibes right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You you know what though? Mrs. Dad more entertaining. Uh, oh Mrs. my oh, god. Mrs. Yes. Dad I just mean far. I just mean the like the detachment on sure. air. Yes. Where it's like you showed up now? Right. Yeah, yeah, I get it. We've never seen you in all this time before? But, okay. But then we got that segment so, with them backstage and this god-awful, like, first-year film school blood job where it looks like someone smeared a hot dog all over his face. Well, it's there's so more terrible. blood on his hand. Yeah. That good on him for at least he did it well enough. Like, he got the hand <laughs> on the faces. Like, so this shows right away... He's better at smearing uh, substances than Luther <laughs> and <laughs> Penelope Ford because they couldn't. They both could not get fucking cake, cake on their on faces. Nope. But he get he did two blood spots on the truck. But he it nailed just it. Looked like I. Whenever I see that, I always I'll never forget fucking like when I started doing like 
indie film like you know two decades ago <laughs> and i would walk into these sets and people would be doing this terrible like low mo- no budget fucking like horror movies or action movies mm-hmm. and i would always ask people like where is he bleeding from like do you see the blood yeah. everywhere where is it coming from and nobody ever had an answer because they never thought that far they're just like oh he's bloodied up there's just blood all over his face and i was always like cool but where's the where's cut? the wound where's the wound <laughs> And this is one of those terrible, shitty B movie, you know, ketchup smears where it's just all over. It's not, there's no origin spot. It's not pooling in any so, location. Yeah. You can easily go like, uh, you know, always oh, lacerated in his head, you right. know, or something it's, or have an, have an object, like do something where that's a little darker in the right. makeup. Yep. And there's like a spot, like if you want to just do it like rest style, like right up the top of the uh, forehead, hairline, like in the hairline yeah. and then have one of the guys just holding an object and then throw it down on the ground. Yeah. Blood needs like, to come from a place. See, it came from somewhere. But I'll do the quick little recap for you of like super quick. So it's Jericho and MGF are always right. funny and entertaining. Won, so the they're the Royal. heels that we do like. Right. But we we are not supposed to like them. The Young Bucks are bad guys up until the point where the all elite bullet club show up. And then they start getting not picked and going out for stuff. That's the times where we go like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I kind of like them because those other guys are more jerks. Great. So that's the, that's upset, the extent of it. They're upset that's that they're the not extent. being included in their own company's booking. That's right. Don Callis somehow is getting better spots as well as the Good Brothers. <laughs> Great. But yes, totally agree. Um, I do like MJF and Jericho mocking their pose and doing that like super quick. Yeah. The, and making the little noise that they do with sure. it. Like the and then running off in the car and taunting them as they're driving off. I'd much sooner see young bucks in this position because they don't pull off bad guys at all. Right. So you might as well be the dopes trying to sure. seek justice. Then, uh, then get me to boo you the correct way. That's an, that's fair. Um, but the good, let's talk about the good. I want to say, um, we've seen him in, uh, you know, plenty of, uh, uh, tag mom- competitions and we've seen that he's obviously very good as a tag specialist but isaiah cassidy fantastic in this match against hangman this seemed to me like a isaiah cassidy shine that's what this felt like this felt like a hey let's mm-hmm. see let's let's let this kid do what he does and man was this a fun match i still absolutely hate the story and it's so convoluted and confusing not confusing this one's not confusing it's just convoluted and unnecessary um, because everybody loves when wrestlers wrestle for other people's money that we don't get to see them use. Um, but man, the match was great. And there's a couple of those moments where Isaiah does things that like evolve certain high fly wrestling things that we've seen. Like there's that one thing that he does where mm-hmm. it seems like he's just going to do a springboard, but he, instead he comes from the outside. He goes over the top rope and lands in the middle rope instead. Yeah. And every time I see that, I think like, how the fuck is that possible? Like one, how do you do a springboard on the top rope? Right. So start with that when not mm-hmm. much, but then to miss the top rope, to go over it, but then land like that's, he is an insane athlete. And this was a great showing for him. And I love, I love yeah. Adam page. Like as a wrestler, I fucking love watching this dude wrestle. So this was a great match. Yeah. I'm really hoping Adam page finds this track to stay on. Cause he really is when he sh- shows himself in the ring, like he is one of their best all round wrestlers. He's and like a Cody. Yes. He's also a character. There's something to grab mm-hmm. onto. The name is good. The music is good. The look. The, the look is fantastic. Like he is, everything is there. Now just use him, use him to do something good. Preferably a Southern, which is there's a big yep. hole in Southern wrestling and sure. Southern heroes. Uh, and he's, he, he's, he's believable. And, um, it's, I know he was being goofy there for a while and being the drinky guy, but it still wasn't hitting the right notes. Nope, um, and Isaiah Cassidy was great. Usually it's the Mark Quinn show and it was right. nice to see Isaiah Cassidy get some love. And these guys really showed that they can, uh, put on a hell of a match. And I totally agree. But they should just add more people in the story. I think that'd be helpful. Um, um, I, I don't know um, that anybody's left. It's got our- <laughs> Shit. I think, I think everybody is involved. Even negative point. one is involved. Yep. Uh, 
my favorite moment of the show, without question, I was totally drawn in. Varsity Blondes versus Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. I'm not even talking about the aftermath yet, which sure. was also a spectacular. Yeah. This match, Bell to Bell, I thought was really great because it gave me legit. It gave me the feels of this is what I used to love about wrestling. I had watched the chamber. I'd watched raw at this point. Like I'd seen a lot of this stuff and I had not had these feels this week in wrestling and not for a long time where I go, they're doing grounded, realistic wrestling. They're, they're doing move for move. When they did a dive, it was because they knocked the guy down and he was out and couldn't get to his feet in time. And the second he did boom, a dive happened onto him. Right. Uh, Brian Poma Jr. was really great. Griff Garrison was really great. It was smart tag team wrestling. There was nothing about it where the commentators had to go, look, see, FTR is really good because we're telling you they're really good. Like they were just all naturally great. Starks was great. Cage waited on the outside and was this beast. And then when he came in, started decimating everything about it was so good. I legitimately got excited for wrestling again. Nice. And then this crescendos. And so the match ends, Brian Cage, Ricky Starks wins. Sting comes out uh, to attack them and fucking points at the rafters. And here comes Darby Allen coming down on a zip line, the ra- a zip line with skateboard in hand. I'm losing my shit. This is so exciting. And like you, you see Ricky starts going like, huh? Huh? Like doing this sort of dancing around. Like, what do I do with this? And then boom, hitting people with the skateboard, knocking them out, Sting attacking people, beating up cage doing all these hot moves like everything about it that you're going yes these guys fucking rock and they finally took it to team taz oh and before that we had the video i forgot the video of darby oh, allen yeah. being drugged so yeah i have a question about that Did, sure i think i might have missed a week of that story because what happened in that story after they abducted darby allen and dragged him away did we ever see Anything after that? That was last week, I believe. I think that was two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago? I think that was two weeks ago. So what did they do when they dragged him away? And how did uh, Sting... I, I'm confused. <laughs> well, he got a camera crew and oh. got Sting uh, Sting's gloves to drive yes, he got and Sting's put gloves Darby in a body bag. Yes, specifically his gloves. We don't know for a fact. So yes... We see this. We see this. Uh, this uh, video of this sort of like dramatic reenactment of it of Darby getting dragged from the truck that Team Taz was driving. Right, and we assume that Darby's in it, and then Sting comes out hauling a body bag. Right, that we think he's just going to bring Darby Allen out in, in it and go like, bag. "Here you go." Yeah. He's, but it's not. It's it's what Taz, to his credit, on commentary is going like, "Hooks in the car. We got hooks ready. We're all going to go out and party right after this match is over." in the body bag is hook all beaten up. What so, kind of shit is this? Is great. The second of the shit bombs dropped on a, uh, on a W of the week. Yeah. yeah. Just everything about it, like built and was exciting on, on the back of a match that was exciting. Sting got to give an ode to like, Hey, this kid wants to go to the rafters. That's fine. I'm surprised he's even using a fucking harness from what I see with him. <laughs> right. So, well, in fairness, he did Super want them cool. to just to build a uh, like a half pipe into it, and they were like, "We don't have the time for this, <laughs> Darby." Yeah, cool. I mean, it was uh, fun. Every- I, I I'm gonna give them credit for doing the best they can with the zip line gag. It always is a little silly to me because it seems like it's not that fast, and it seems like the people in the ring are just waiting for you to get down and hit the ground where they could potentially just snatch your ass right out of the air and just beat your ass while you're tethered to a fucking rope. It seems like they, once they get their hands on you, if they wanted to, they're just, you're a pinata at that point. So there's a little bit, but they did a decent enough job where they, he sure. got on the ground. Everyone and he in NXT attacking. could also just step away when they're on the outside of the ring and go, Oh, there's someone jumping at us. Let's sure. not all hold each other. Yeah, and but that's all pro wrestling ever, but yes, but it was fun. It was like, this was a, it was a good segment and the little pre-record was fun. The little thing where he pops out and he kind of has stings, like a little combination of his and Sting's face paint, um, which is which mm-hmm. is a fun little piece of business there. It's finally joining these two in some way, which right. I think is what's what we've been wanting because Sting alludes to like, yeah, there's something familiar here. Well, great. Now we have some 
Sting takes a little bit of Darby and vice versa. And it's now, now feels like, okay, this, they are, they are a team now. Right. Right on. So that was my favorite moment. What about you? Oh, I, I think my favorite moment was just probably that, uh, that match with, uh, with Paige and Isaiah. Um, just gotcha. because, just because it made new, it made me like, like a new person and it made me more interested in, and actually like the product that they're putting out there. Yeah. Other than that, like uh, the main event was good. You know, the women's match was all right. Um, and the terrible Marvez spot was so bad. It was good. But other than that, yeah, not, uh, that was probably my, my moment. We have the pay-per-view for AEW revolution coming up Sunday, March 7th. So we'll break down the card more at that point, but next, next week currently, we have eight matches slated, so it's pretty stacked. Um, no tooth and nail match yet, so fingers crossed everybody on that one. We'll see. Uh, now to the other side of the Wednesday night kidnappings. Uh, admittedly, I did want to watch uh, some NXT, but there was a lot of life stuff that got in the way that uh, didn't allow me to do so. So um, apologies. Well, I, I do think if if anything, you're you should definitely go back and check out the no DQ match. I think that'll be your highlight. Carrying cross, this might be my favorite carrying cross match I've ever seen. Um All right. and or uh killer cross either. Like this, I think he was on fire. He's firing on all the cylinders. It's a no DQ match, so he just gets to be this crazy monster. He's fighting off all of Legado del Fantasma, because it was a no DQ match, so of course they're getting involved. Um, it was a fun start to the match. Good Lord. Um, what? It's the week of WWE no DQ matches. Oh, sure. Sure. Um, but this one had a really fun start to it. So like, you know, earlier in the night, William Regal is backstage and he's saying like, Oh, make sure you tell me the second Escobar arrives. Like I want to talk to him or whatever. So at some point in the night, Escobar arrives, but he doesn't get out of the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, Legado del Fantasma, the other two guys, uh, Mendoza and wild, like they walk around and they're kind of guarding the door and they, and he doesn't come out of the car. Right. So sure. People get kidnapped and thrown into yeah, cars. That's exactly. how that group started. Yeah. So w- later in the night, once the, you know, they, it's like, all right, coming up next, it's cross from Santana, uh, uh San- Santos Escobar. We come back to the product and Karen Cross's music is playing and we see Scarlet like starting, you know, she starts the, the entrance and it's like, mm-hmm. all right, we're just expecting Cross to come out. And then, of course, it cuts to the car and Cross is already there just beating the shit out of the other two guys. And that's how, and matches were off. Like, that's how the match starts. So it's he started, does hang out in parking lots. We've known that about him. That's how he debuted. So, right, yeah. So, man, so yeah. these guys in cars. Um, listen, production value. All right. You got to use you got to use what you have. Uh, but this was a fun match so. and they brought it all. Obviously they brought it from the parking lot all the way into the inside. They broke everything at ringside. They used all the things that they could have at their disposal. Really fun match. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. So th- I think if of all the things I know you don't like uh, and do like about NXT, that'll be the thing that I tell you, Scott, like if you're going to watch any of it and you want to check it out, cause I know, I really know you like carrying check that match out. It was fun. And it went, it, I will. And Santos is pretty good too. I, yeah. I, I, do, I do like him. It, I don't it, love him. But I, I, I like him. He's, he's really good. Same. And you know what, what What was nice about this, actually, though, was that it was also the first time that I feel like Karrion Cross got to sell a little bit. Like, yeah, he obviously, like in the match against Champa, and like he's he's been pushed to the limit, so to speak. But in this match, because right. it was three on one, he got his ass beat for, like at times. And it was nice to see that part of the character that like, oh, this isn't just the mindless you know incessant monster that keeps coming and coming coming and coming and coming like there is yeah there is a push and pull to it so um yeah other than that i mean not much really more to talk about if you didn't watch it that's me explaining shit to you is not really going to be wildly fascinating for anybody i will say uh I, I i unlike you i enjoy gargano in the way and they're they're doing a silly thing with theory maybe potentially being kind of under the control of dexter loomis so like <gasps> Because he was kidnapped. Yep, and uh, and let go. Because let's we didn't really talk about that last week. Where it's like, where's our guy? Where's our guy? Oh, great, there he is. Story over. <laughs> like, yeah, in his underwear. In his underwear. Yeah. Which thankfully Wade Barrett was the one to keep screaming like, yes, why, why is he in his, his underwear? underwear? Yeah. Wade Barrett, not there in person, uh, made a joke that he's been kidnapped by Dexter Loomis this week, <laughs> and he's in. He was in Dexter Loomis's uh, lair 
that's where he was broadcasting not a joke. from. Maybe not a not. joke. That's what the show is. I'm glad. So the kidnappings continued. We had another yep. kidnapping. Yep. Um, but yeah, you know, Christ. at one point, at one point in the match between Gargano and Loomis, Gargano wanted to give Theory a chair to hit him, and he didn't. He didn't do it. And he looked at at Loomis, and he he seemingly mouthed like, "Oh, I understand. I understand." To Loomis, and then didn't do it. And then, of course, Loomis picks up the victory. And then, in a segment later in the evening. The way is all backstage and it's theory telling Gargano and, and everybody like, listen, he's just Loomis is just misunderstood. He's not that bad of a guy. And there, so we're doing a little bit of this, you know, maybe like brainwashing. Maybe he's got like, uh, you know, uh, what's that called? The place in Sweden, uh, Stockholm syndrome. Maybe he's got a little Stockholm mm-hmm. syndrome or something. So, but uh, sounds other than like that, he's ready to join Brandy Rhodes in the Nightmare Collective is what I'd maybe. say. Maybe. Oh, you know what? One other thing that I enjoyed that I don't know if you'll like it. You might because you like references to old wrestling. So Cameron Grimes. To wrestling. (laughs) To wrestling. Cameron Grimes. uh, You know, he's doing this new like rich guy character. And he's not. Yeah, he's he's struck it rich. (laughs) Found some old uh, some money in in one of his old hats or something. I don't know. Exactly. Nailed it. I think he bought GameStop stocks. (laughs) (laughs) but but, uh he's rich now and he doesn't know how to be rich or how to be a rich bad guy so he's watching old ted dibiase videos i like Um, that oh so he's gonna get a virgil i hope so um and so it's gonna be one of those names we listed of all of the fucking people who are signed to nxt uh ty valkyrie is gonna be his virgil um or uh the they'll they'll uh, downgrade uh oh what's his nuts uh carmella's guy that doesn't hang out with carmella anymore uh reginald Virginald. Reginald. Maybe Virginald. Yeah, he'll get rich. His name will be Virgin. Virginald. <laughs> yeah, um, he's it's a verb. You become virginald. Yep, nailed it. Uh but in any case, he's watching the videos and he comes across the video of the little kid with the basketball that we all know and love. Yes. Uh because the they don't want to show video, the Rob Van But he doesn't Dam finish one. it. Yeah, he doesn't finish it. He watches it and he doesn't finish it because someone comes away, someone comes by. And he goes, oh, okay, I'm going to do a thing. And so he bets somebody that they can't dribble the basketball 10 times. But because he didn't finish the video, he doesn't know how to end the bit. So the, he just loses the bet. And now he's angry at Ted DiBiase because he's doesn't, he's like, Ted DiBiase, I don't understand this. Ma- I don't understand how you're doing this magic. How does this, how is this a bad thing to do to somebody? And it's, and it's sort of an ongoing bit throughout the rest of the night where he's constantly trying to do the basketball thing. And he's the foible. He's just the idiot bad guy who doesn't have to be a bad guy. And it keeps coming back to bite him in the ass. It was, it was very entertaining to me, enjoyable. And, you know, I don't know that it does a ton for the character, but it was fun TV. So we have Jamie Noble and Eugene combined here. That's what it sounds like. And a little JBL because he was a redneck turned rich guy. No, that's what Jamie Noble was at one point. He got rich. Yeah, I don't. I don't wasn't and watching. Then he changed the name of his finishing move to Pay Dirt. See, I wasn't watching her that. I don't remember that. I only remember Jamie Noble being the small, loud, angry guy. He got rich when he was cruiserweight champion, and that was one time where we actually tangibly saw the money because the nitty got a, a fur coat and like he was still nice. rocking his clothes. But then he got like, I got a double wide. Nice. Woo! All right. Well, fantastic. Um, so, uh, this past weekend we had, uh, elimination chambers. We did. We had the chamber. We had, was it four or five matches? Four, five matches in total. Okay. Um, uh, one, uh, the, how one, about the first chamber? <laughs> there's one missing from our little lineup here. We're missing the, oh, okay. uh, but, but yeah, there were, there were five matches in total. Um, First chamber being for the contendership yes. for the right. universal championship. So I, as I said earlier, the week of great matches that don't feel like they really matter or play into anything. And that's what this was. I was, this was a super fun chamber. I loved this chamber. I loved Orton getting eliminated abruptly. And the first one out, I enjoyed um, oh, so you're talking about the other, you're talking about the main event chamber then. Oh no. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, I was reading the wrong ones. I was reading the wrong ones. Yeah. Cause there's two yep. fucking chamber matches. Yep. Welcome and, to TNA lockdown, everybody. And it's not, and one of them isn't the women. Um, so I apologize. Still great match. Uh, Owens is a goddamn star. Sammy Zayn 
Holy shit, Sami Zayn was so fun in this. Um, uh, Cesaro and Daniel Bryan, obviously representing, like they've been kind of been putting on a, putting them on a pedestal lately. This match was great. I think that the uh, Corbin was the only kind of weak link of the group. And I like him Corbin. That's not to say that he's bad, but it didn't seem like he had much to do here. Everybody else had this bigger featured role. Yes. He's the big strong heavy that doesn't yeah. have any credibility to win it. It would just be yes. a shocking win. So, right. You know, he did, he did, played his role fine. Absolutely. Um, but all, overall, really fun match with great showing and great athleticism and some brutal moments from everybody. And Daniel Bryan wins. He was one of my two. I assumed it was going to be Cesaro or Daniel Bryan. And I assumed that this started, this started the pay-per-view so that uh, the match could be later in the evening. But no. Sure. The universal title match happens immediately. Roman comes out and I go, all right. This is fine. We all know nobody expects Roman to lose, right? So it also made this elimination chamber feel kind of useless because I don't think anybody expected Roman to lose to whoever the victor was. Unless, mm. you know, Edge cost him the victor or something like that. But then that's like, who cares? Because Edge is going to go to face a champion. So this seemed to me like an obvious win. So when that match starts, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking like, all right, this is a great, a great opportunity to even add more heat to Roman by just having him abuse the already beat up, just went through a chamber, Brian, who we all love. Have him like go for do the pin and then pick up on the two, you know, that kind of thing. Like just have him be a a brutal heel who's just punishing Daniel Bryan um just just because he can. But it's not that. This didn't add any heat to Roman. It was essentially a squash match. And I didn't care. I didn't feel bad for Brian because he just beat him in a a brief match. And yeah, we got it that Brian was tired, but it's not like he abused the guy. Like, I don't know. This felt like a big, this felt like a big wet fart. Just fucking nothing. Yeah. Uh, Roman cashed in his money in the bank at the beginning of the night. <laughs> right. Because that's what WWE does. It does everything in twos. Yep. So when we had this one, like I, I, I knew I was going to have the investment for one of these. And this was the match I gave it to you. It's like, all right, I'll be into this one. Cause I like the competitors overall more. And I think there's more excitement here. Same. Um, for the potential, but am I going to care about two title chamber matches? No. Yep. No, I don't that are going to take 30, 40 minutes. Um, so I enjoyed it. It was fun. Same sort of thing. It was nice that Brian had that initial like, I um, I almost got you. I got the I got the passion. I got it. Oh, I didn't get it. The nice capper to all of it though was when Edge attacks. Edge didn't do the Thunderdome talking. Yep. Edge just pointed and made faces. Yep. And did that. He didn't. He didn't try and do like the. You know why? You know why this is happening right, or any sure. of the. the Dumb yeah. shit that no one can seemingly talk well in the Thunderdome when they don't have a mic on them and they turn the audio up way too high. Right. He just made all the nice moments that way and Roman sold and that was good. But it's like, oh, at the expense of who? Daniel Bryan. Got yep. it. Yep. Great. Exactly. The, the other miracle wunder <laughs> medical uh, kid. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And but he's old news. And they 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 threw the pyro up. It was this big crazy show. And then the 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 little bug came on the lower right corner, and that was the end of the pay per view. Because that's the highlight of the show. That's the big that's the big ending right there. Wait, what's that? No, there's a whole pay per view left. We have to have a oh. women's tag match first. Okay, but thankfully it only clocked in about like two forty overall. I, will I say, do hope. I do yeah. hope like Brian has a bit of the Mustafa Ali. That's not two years later that he does go like. Hey man, right? I came back a while ago. And now that you showed up and you won the title, or you've challenged at WrestleMania, like I still want my shot. And him and Edge get to do something. I think that'd be fucking great. Uh, God, I hope so. Um, but yeah, we had the women's tag title match, which again felt cookie cutter to me. I felt like I knew exactly where this was going to go and how it was going to go, and was what it was. I want to say that the surprise of the night for me was the U.S. title match. I was not expecting that that match was was super entertaining to me. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't like how it ended because it's stupid because why? First off, Morrison should have won. Like anytime somebody enters a match that wasn't supposed to be there, 
That's the rule of wrestling. That person has to win. That's how it works. Come on, WWE. Haven't you watched WWE before? <laughs> yeah, I thought Nia Jax was really bad. And then I watched this match and I was like, oh, so here we go again. We have Riddle, the other legit guy fighting a legit guy, but we're going to throw in a third guy in place because Riddle just can't keep beating him. So sure. he gets title opportunity after title opportunity. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're going to watch Kofi Kingston later yep. where we make story after story about people that, well, they almost got it. So they should try again. How is Kofi's rematch for the title? Oh, never happened. Right. Uh, we see, we see Riddle in there who's tapped out uh, very quickly to Lashley and we see Morrison in there and they do some nice stuff, but it ends with Riddle taking the crutch from MVP and beating down Lashley yeah. and then pinning Morrison. Like a heel. Which is a yes, dirty heel. Like a, like a like a dirty heel that finally beat no one. Yeah. He didn't beat the champion. This is what drives me nuts about these three ways and shit. It's like, okay, granted, like Lashley's still the guy who got screwed over, but he didn't get screwed over by the heel. Morrison, as you say, yes. Morrison should have been the guy that won this way right? or anything else, but this doesn't do shit for Riddle. Nope. This makes him look cowardly and it also doesn't protect. It doesn't protect Lashley. It's not like you're saving Lashley all of a sudden. He doesn't need Lashley can lose a match. He's he's one of those guys where it's like you didn't need to put a third guy in here to take a fall to begin with. When when Lee couldn't make it, they should have been like, great. It's a one on one match done. Especially if it was going to end with a crutch involved anyway. But this was yet another, well, there's no disqualification. So I yeah. guess we don't really have to come up with anything clever. We can just right. say no to Q and we're good. Yeah. And uh, there's that. We can get to the end result we want to sure. via this. So and, and I, we're fine. I will say, though, like I, I started this by saying surprise because I did enjoy the match. Like I thought it was fun watching him. I actually really enjoyed watching the moments that Riddle and Morrison just got to go at it. I like to see that we got a little bit of a a technical game out of Morrison, which I wasn't expecting. Like there was some nice fun, like, you know, kind of catches catch can wrestling from Morrison in a few spots and some fun, like submission transitions and stuff like that. So I enjoyed the he's match. Very adaptable. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's great. And um, yeah, I agree. It's just the, the, the match result of what we do with it. I go, yeah. all right, well, all, right. all three of them kind of got screwed over. Yeah. So fuck. Um, also, on the pre-show to discover who was in that match, Morrison was in like another fatal four-way big multi-man match. And I do want to note that uh, uh, Elias was in that match. And uh, they explicitly said on commentary, Elias, uh, when if he wins this match, he's, he's potentially going out for his first ever WWE championship. You heard it here, folks. 24-7 title, not recognized as a WWE championship. Well, how come that wasn't in the news? Bad Bunny touting his 24-7 title on on uh, SNL this past weekend. Too Why much wasn't that in the news? Because that was a, a third of Raw. Too much people. So we're going to get into that. What is that thing he's holding? Um, but uh, anyways, we had then we had our main chamber match. Or in our main, our other chamber match, I say. Um, which, again, did not feel uh, at all... Uh, there was no part of me that thought that Drew McIntyre wasn't leaving this as the champion. And that took away from the product. Again, super fun match. I said earlier, I enjoyed Orton getting taken out. I enjoyed AJ cheating and almost ripping his door off even more. So dumb shit too. Even more. So I enjoy Sami Zayn yelling. Well, how come my camera crew got ejected from ringside, but almost was able to stay for the entire match. And even him on Twitter, recognizing that they're inconsistent with their storytelling. So, okay. I mean, yes. Going back to how this started with Miz, the only time that they show anything in any of these main roster shows where there's no audio and they're filming from far right. away, the voyeur like shots, six feet further away of, MVP going Miz. So here's how the money in the bank cash in works. The one guy is super beat up and then you go in and cash it in and Miz doing his best Marine five acting going, mm-hmm. this plan makes sense. I hadn't thought about this. So we see that before we get the montage that includes Miz saying he's going to cash in. Uh, and then that just kills anything about this match any potential like bell rings and i go 
you know what? Maybe fucking AJ Styles wins this thing. Anything right. like that, gone. Because of I'm course. just waiting for, for the for thing Lashley. that you yeah. you told us me over the head with. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so that all sucks. Almost ripping off the 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 pod plexiglass, and then it's no DQ, so he can totally do that. It's fine. You're out of here. You're banned. You're you're gone. Why? It's no DQ. It doesn't fucking matter. Right. What's the threat? What, is he not going to wrestle a match? He doesn't wrestle a match. You didn't threaten him with fines, suspension, nope. anything. Pierce is just the one who's standing on steps. And granted, I like Pierce, so I think it's funny to watch him do it and go like, you're out of here. Right. I don't care. You're gone. You're this and that. And almost going, right. I guess. And he goes, I like the fuck. I like that. He says, I'm told that you're out of here. Like he adds that in (laughs) just. Yeah. (laughs) From, from the, from the the corporate ministry head of all this. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Like according to Braun Strowman, Shane McMahon. Yeah. So that, that was this dumb. It's like, I get it. You're just, it's turning Michael Bay. Like the chamber moments and everything is it's just turning into moments or Zack sure. Snyder where it's like, yeah, we want these big moments, but they're relevant. And the first chamber match was no, we're going to make a match. We're going to make an actual good bell to bell match that people are going to enjoy. Moments will occur within it because of what we're doing right. rather than we're just going to make big moments of like, look in the history, you'll see Otis going through a chamber. Isn't that nuts to the outside? Right. And here's almost, he ripped one off. Okay. Which, well. by the way, yeah, that happened accidentally in one of these where the back door fell off of one. And, uh, oh, maybe that's what it was. Maybe in the first match, at some point, the back door fell off during the match. And like I was like, oh, somebody could easily hop out, but nobody did. I bet you mm-hmm. that was because that door was just so flimsy because almost needed to rip it off later in the evening. <laughs> it was the probably. same. It was the same door. That uh, yeah, I didn't think about that I right now, but that's yeah, probably the I case. Just put that together. That's exactly what happened. Oh, and hey, everybody, Miz is WWE champion. So there's and that. Um, Miz oh, I mean champion. Otis. It's Otis. No. Yeah. No. That's right. He's training. Bank. He's he's training because he can't get success with a girlfriend and uh, money in the bank opportunity. Well, in fairness, she so. got drafted. <laughs> Are they on the same show now? Or I don't even know. I have no idea, Scott. I have fucking no idea. Dear Lord. Okay. Somebody end it. Cut Cut to Raw. Oh, favorite favorite moment of Chamber. I mean, are we saying that the first Chamber match is our favorite? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say everything that Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, yeah. Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan did in that first Chamber. Not to take anything Jay away Uso from too. Uso, yeah, but he as like the last one out, he did, had the less, had the least sort of, uh, you know, I mean, at least sort of time to shine. Yeah, but I, I still thought it was uh, solidified in sure. like how he eliminated Owens. That was great, right? Yeah, puts his arm in the door when someone is vacating. Yeah, really cool. It just takes advantage. Like I like that. I like that he was dirty and uh, bad and all that way. But I, I loved, I loved. Uh, um, Sammy placating do the the connection, the humanity to Kevin when they first came out of the pod. Like, come on, you and me, Kev, we know each other. Like, they're not like us. They don't want either one of us to win this. They don't want either one of us here. And Kevin Owens come like, you know what? You're right, buddy. Slamming his head into the cage. Just yeah. they have such great fucking chemistry. I absolutely fucking love them. Yeah, I, I I love their moments together, and I hope that they go. You know what? We should do this for Mania. <laughs> right. Nine every year for the next ten years. Sure. Best of Mania series. Oh, you know what? They've never done that before. Like, and told us they were doing it. They have done it accidentally with certain superstars. But like, make that the storyline. Be like, hey, for the next fucking, you know, three years, we're doing a best two out of three. You know, like, right. um, and tell the story of the course of three years. Why the fuck not? Yeah. They can, they can still feud with other people and have matches with other people. But it's all it all comes back to each other. Anyways, yeah, moment, yeah, moment is that is the WWE. No, I'm sorry, the Universal Contendership Chamber match. Well, cut to WWE Monday Night Raw starring Bad Bunny. Uh, we had Miz TV where he's the champ and he's out there and MVP's going like, "Hey, we had a deal that if Lashley helped take out McIntyre post match, which I guess we didn't even cover too because it's like, yeah, Lashley, yeah." 
comes out and Lashley's looking fucking awesome. Lashley's great, right. where he's beating up Drew and does that. Then Miz comes and catches in. He's saying that's part of the deal. So Lashley gets the first shot, and Miz and Morrison go like, uh, I don't know. Right. <laughs> Alexandra said as she was watching this with me this morning, she said, "I feel so bad for Miz and MVP." <laughs> And I was like, why? I was like, because I feel like they're good at this and everybody else in the ring is just ruining it for them. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. This was mostly about the time when like Lashley and Braun was out there and it's like everybody's flubbing lines. Lashley's like, wasting time's like wasting wasting my money. And I I I like money, you guys. I don't I don't like wasting my money. And he's like, okay, cool, great. And then Braun is saying the fucking wrong words. <laughs> I was just like, Oh, you know yeah, what? let's let's get into that. Cause that's the Lashley <laughs> ultimatum here. So we have Miz, Braun Strowman out there, and then we get Shane McMahon, who blows up. <laughs> Walking to the ring, doing the dance. Doing the dance and everything, and getting out of there, going on the mic, going, okay, so. Um, I'll tell you what, maybe the guy who AEW hires as the, uh, the, the spit mopper, <laughs> um, maybe he gets his foot in the door. Uh, head out there, clean up, clean up after Shane, and then he's got a little resume, right? A little resume to show AEW. Hey, look, look what I did over in WWE. God, Shane McMahon being out of breath was damn near my favorite moment of the week because that was so <laughs> fucking funny. He he got blown up for no one in the crowd. So right. if you just take the actual situation of it's like what eight people. <laughs> 10 people in that active arena. Right. And he's just dancing around to a song uh, and going, uh, 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 oh no, I, I can't talk on the bike, but I have to keep dancing because that's right. the shtick. <laughs> right. And then, oh, if you still had uh, neurons in that brain of yours, uh, he can't talk. And then uh, Lashley going like, this sucks. You suck. This idea sucks. And I'm more, I'm more quantified than that guy over there. I'm, I've more considered. I'm no, that's not the word. I'm more, I'm more, uh, uh, contemporaneous. No, wait a minute. Hang on. I'll get this. I'm more, what's uh, that? I'm What's more, that goddamn word they wrote on that uh, piece of paper? They told me to memorize. It's I not my it, word. I want to say it starts with a C. No, it starts with a Q. It starts. It's on a C, but it sounds like a C. No, it's 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 cut. It's it sounds like a C because it's. I'm Q-U. more inclusive than that guy over there. Uh, I'm more considerate. I think that's what he actually said. I'm more considerate. Oh, that's so kind of you. <laughs> I'm more concerned than him over there. I'm more conservative. Yeah, that you're right. You know what? You're right. You probably are more yeah. conservative. Yes, yeah, that's probably uh, but true. Again, not what we're talking about here. Red, white, and brawn. Hundred percent. I do love though, like it does seem that they're writing in that maybe Braun is kind of an idiot and doesn't get it because they had Shane say the thing that we're all thinking. Like, yeah, out of we've breath. Ex- we've ex- yeah, but we've explained this to you. Former WWE champions were in this chamber. You're a former Universal title, so they had Shane say like, "I'm not sure how many brain cells are left in there," or whatever he said. I was like, Jesus yeah. Christ, are you writing him to be a simple idiot? I, I wish I wish Braun just got furious with not remembering the word he was supposed to say and then go like, well, I don't care. There's too many goddamn titles anyway. I don't even want to play no more. I'm way more constitutional than the Miss <laughs> or Bobby look at, Lashley. Look at me. I'm way more constipated than that guy over there. Uh, I'm I'm far more Confucius than everybody in this ring. <laughs> I'm far more Cantonese than any gentleman in this ring. I've got 16 more cancers than anybody in this ring in this whole locker room. Look at me. Look at him over there. I'm way more COVID-19 than he is. (laughs) And I'm even 16% more coronavirus. Oh, man. We have a new show launching on Dragon Wagon Radio soon here. The words that Braun Strowman don't know the podcast. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Like I said, a runner up for favorite moment of the show. You got to seek that out. Uh, as far as that segment with Braun and Shane, <laughs> just, Oh, every week, please, 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 please wait until the next botchamania. I'm sure it'll be included. 
Sure, but you got to watch it pure first sometimes, you know. Right. And yeah. then you get the comic rendition of Botchmania. Um, I'll, I'll 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 note this segment. We had so we had a match with the, the ladies, not for the tag team titles, but Charlotte was out there. Then we had a segment backstage that was mm, pretty good. I don't the think flares? it was amazing, and they. They did some damage control. Yeah, the flares. Yes. D- this to me felt like damage control. I even said that when we were watching it. I was like, oh, this is them retconning all of what Rick may or may not have done that he was m- supposed to or maybe not supposed to do. But also, door is still open. Yeah. So uh, we have Rick and and the the history making segment of not crying through a segment talking with his daughter. Oh. Uh, and I felt like together. he got a little cry. He got a little teary. He got a little wet eye. Nope. No. Charlotte did. Well, yeah, that was Charlotte obvious. legit cried. All right. So the torch has officially been passed. Um, that they talk about the history and what he means and why he wants to be there for her. So we're retreading again, and she's going, "Yeah, but just go away, you know, because you're almost gonna die soon." And this is how I want to remember you on camera last. So just go away. And him saying, like, I want the women to be the the biggest thing in the the market. Like, I want them to be the top thing. And I know you're successful because of you, but I I was glad to be there to be a part of it. And they do the one little segment where they talk about, yeah, but dad, you think it's so great to to, to do all this? She does the poses and the struts of uh, being out there and claiming that you're the father. And he goes, look, I never said I was the father. But... I just thought, and then they work back into the other thing. So it's like someone specifically said, like, don't say that you're not the father, <laughs> but you can say that you didn't say that you were the father. Okay. Right. But we need this door open. Uh, it, the whole, yeah, I don't know. You, you say that this wasn't that bad. This was tough because it just seemed like I'm I'm actually going to give credit to Charlotte for like trying to tell a real story here and trying to have an emotional impact of like like it is time for you to go home like you're still tr- desperate to be the nature boy you're desperate and you're doing it at my expense and like so and she was trying to tell a real story there and and I give her credit for that but it's just uh it's just built on a foundation of poo but I think he did a good job too of also trying sure. to do it but with someone poking them the whole time going right. like, but but include what we wrote to, for you too. It's Fair. just a night of like Braun also trying to juggle it and maintain it. It's you see these moments when people go, yeah, but I could be me. Right. And then you see why Paul White goes like, I'm yep. fucking out of here. I'm going <laughs> right. to go sure. to the land where who knows? You just throw spaghetti at the camera and they right. lay it. They air it. So let's do it. Um, We have to talk about the 24 seven champion who mumbled his way backstage with Damian Priest and we saw Scott, footage Scott, of the 24-7. The, it's not mumbling. He's just speaking Spanish and you don't speak it. Not every language that what? isn't English is mumbling, Scott. Scott's what? like, man, I watched this movie. I, this movie, it was made in Taiwan and everybody just mumbled through the whole movie. I didn't understand a single word. Look at, look at that guy over there. I'm more Consuelo than he is. I'll tell you that right now. I'm far more conquistador than any of you. You look in this ring right now. You tell me who's more chimichanga than me. <laughs> oh, chimichanga is a good one. So, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, that rumor that we, that we talked about a while back where they wanted <laughs> this, what they wanted, Damien Priest to be best friends with somebody so bad. They wanted to be with <laughs> right. Kevin Owens and we're seeing it unfold with bad bunny. So every time I see what's going on with bad bunny, I picture it being Kevin Owens, regardless right. of what it is. Like <laughs> Kevin Owens, 24 seven champion, Kevin Owens on SNL musical guest. Yeah. Singing like singing the book <laughs> T song, like doing all this stuff. Um, and, and also not fighting his own battles. Damien Priest doing that as well for him. And he's going like, I don't know what you do. I got you, buddy. So we had our truth that he cracked up Damien Priest legit, you know, doing the the Bugs Bunny thing and all that. Then uh, truth so is the best some, part of this is truth. The best part of it, of most things that he's involved in is truth. Yeah, he's he's doing the best that he can with all this, and he he is certainly fun. Uh, but 
God, that we had a moment later in the show where it's Damian Priest with Bad Bunny versus Angel Garza. Garza's ta- taunting Bunny, telling him to get in the ring. And I don't know if anybody's ever explained to Bad Bunny the whole idea idea that helps everything in this business is the art of selling right which he is not capable of because he doesn't make facial expressions nope so this is going to be problematic at some point if not already and uh he has no reactions to anything scars is reacting for him and they fight uh, uh, uh verbally and then yeah. bad bunny uh sort of distracts and helps priest get the win and then uh the cavalcade of comedy characters come out to try to get the 24 te- seven title and the, the fighting champion, Damien, uh, Damien, <laughs> Damien Priest steps in and helps bad bunny. Just swat them all away. Well, so it's again, a, cha- this it's is a championship that he doesn't want. It's not acknowledged as a title by WWE. Don't forget Elias, right? <laughs> Never been a so, champion. So, uh, this is what, this is what bad bunny fans are seeing when he puts it out there, when he retweets these tweets, like this is what wrestling is. You don't actually fight and it's all roll-ups when you do. So great. Ryan said, you're right. Best thing for wrestling. Best thing. You nailed it, buddy. He, I'm way more quinceanera than even bad bunny is. <laughs> uh, and, uh, Rhea Ripley. Oh, we're still talking about the show. Okay, she's coming. <laughs> she's Forget coming. the surprise. We listen. Don't surprise us. Don't play the music. Don't get us the pop. Play vignettes for the next five weeks, and then the week before she comes, tell us she's coming. But here's the thing: don't actually have her come that week. Instead, play the same video again that says next week Rhea Ripley, and then have her come. Uh, show her backstage where we can't hear her, so we just see her arriving, and she's just saying hi to people, and it's kind of uneventful and unsurprising. And then later in the evening, show her talking to Adam Pierce and him nodding and her, but don't tell us what they're saying. Just show us that. And then later in the evening, play your music after telling us before you come from commercial that after the commercial, here comes Rhea Ripley, have her come out, have her cut a promo that tells us why she's here, which is the exact same promo that we've gotten when she was facing Charlotte at WrestleMania. So reiterate all that exact same stuff. Don't have a wrestle a match though. Instead have somebody else come out and have her like get the best of her in a quick moment. And then it's like a wink and nod of like, Oh, she's here. What is she going to do? And then make it as unexciting as physically possible. And point to the WrestleMania sign. Just so we have the footage. Don't forget to point to the WrestleMania sign. So we have the footage. My favorite moment of raw though. It's a bit of a deep dive, but on the surface, it was this Randy Orton giving a promo, uh, talking about, you know, the chamber and what's going on and where he's going to be. And at one point, coughs during it which i was like oh oh somebody fucking give the swab test to randy was, there so i'm gonna say i'm gonna give credit to randy for the acting job because alexandra very realistically reacted what the fuck covid much she was like this dude just yeah. coughed like i was like and i immediately said to her i was like you don't watch enough wrestling <laughs> like i but you know still gonna give him but credit. he he still did it well enough where i was, yeah. I was like oh it's too bad they didn't do it another take because he's doing a really good promo right and he coughed yeah. all right but I guess they did it live and whatever. Cut to Alexa Bliss sitting inside of a pentagram laughing. From two weeks ago uh, or a week ago, whatever it was. But yeah, they just, you know, just hit replay on that. And she has cast a spell of some sort. Cut back to Randy Orton, who then vomits up a black ooze. It was oil. It's my guess. Black gold, Texas tea. He's turning him into the Tin Man. Oh, he's gonna see. Be, I have another gonna, theory. Go ahead. Oh, well, this is why it's my favorite moment of the week. So, like I said, it's a bit of a deep dive. So, Orton's doing his promo. Alexa Bliss summons the dark spirits, but is but is summoned these powers and has aligned herself with Bray Wyatt because she's seeking the real retribution. This is why Mustafa oh. Ali's dark things don't work this is why he can't make the spirits happen with these these demonic masks because alexa bliss can tap into the real retribution for all the women wrestlers that randy orton shit in their bags so then (laughs) while he's giving his promo she summoned all the shit that he had shit out in their bags but it was old and 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 uh decayed and black so then he just started shitting out of his own mouth all right i'll take it 
I'll take it. That's my favorite moment of the week. <laughs> I'm way more quantum physics than of Randy Orton's mouth puke. Um. Yeah. I'm. You know what? I'm gonna say. I mentioned it earlier. There was good wrestling this week. Uh. I think that the one on one between Riddle and John Morrison was a delightful match. Really good one on one match. Some really fun moments. Um. Um. Uh, Benjamin and Alexander and Lucha House Party. Fun ma- again. Like good wrestling matches. I just don't really care about the outcomes of. Um, main but, event. Um, as well. What was the main event? I don't even remember what it was. Oh yeah, last year Strowman. Braun Strowman. Yeah, and um, uh, if Braun wins, he's in the title match. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, uh, give this the stamp of good job WWE because I thought for sure they were setting up the three way because that's what they do. Right. I was legitimately surprised when Bobby Lashley won and Strowman is just going to go home. And lastly, one legit, legit he one straight yep. up, and Miz is scared. And Miz, lastly, but, had a great moment after the match, looking a little shocked, like, "Wow, I fucking put him down!" And then, yeah, I fucking put him down. And yeah, he's and he's then, on a tear, and reattacked him, like like kept attacking him afterwards, like after mm-hmm. the bell, because he's just he's a scary monster. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. So you just the favorite moment is sort of the encapsulated like um. Good yeah, matches. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say moment for actually might have been uh you know what it might have just been Miz's face when they made the three way. <laughs> just it might have just been that shot um of Miz's face when they suggested the that if uh he wins it it'll be a triple threat match for his title. Miz did great work. Great work. Well, I think that covers our recap of what was going on, but uh, we've got the Compadres hotline, which is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Call with your questions, your comments, or whatever Braun Strowman might be more than than anyone else in the ring. You could be way more communicative on the Compadres hotline this week. (laughs) 747-666-5606. It's on our social media stuff as well. You can see it on our posts. The number's there in case you're like, oh, what was it? 747-666-5606. Call anytime with what you got, and let's go to our calls now. Hey, you guys. This is Braun Strowman. I don't think it's nice that you guys are making fun of me on compadres. I'm way more compadres than you guys are. That was a bizarre first hotline call to get from Braun Strowman. (laughs) I didn't even know he listen to the show i did and he's a guest he's a former guest of the show <laughs> okay no for real this time though let's see what the hotline does hola compadres brad from tennessee here um first of all I promise to keep it short and sweet i'm like last time i called when i was a teensy bit pit chase uh but i just got done with dynamite and <laughs> it was the first wrestling show in a few months that i didn't fast forward through the majority of i mean the whole pace of the show was just better than what's come to be expected from AEW. I mean, Moxley's promo made me actually care about the whole Omega feud. Um, Pillman Jr., I think, has it, and Griff Garrison's got a lot of potential. The whole Sting and Darby thing, I mean, that the last few weeks with Sting has put to rest any worry I had about him like hurting his legacy or like dying in the ring. I mean... He looks awesome. He looks as good or better than he did, I think, six years ago when he came to WWE. Um, and also, thank God, AEW actually knows how to cover up that bald spot. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the ladies kicked ass, even though it was at their normal 920 time slot for whatever reason. Um, and then the main event was fire. Um, Phoenix may very well be the best in the world right now, and Archer's awesome. And Jake the Snake got out of breath from standing. Ugh, <laughs> get him off TV, guys. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts on just the quality of this week's Dynamite. You know, was it just me? Was I just having a good day? Or was it what I think it was, which was a good step in the right direction? But uh, for the hell of it, um, if you had to pick, who is the best wrestler in the world today, in your guys' opinion? Like I said, Phoenix is at least in the discussion to me. But uh, I'll hang up and listen to your guys' answers. And thanks again for all you do. Anybody listening to this show, go to Patreon and be a Powski. It's awesome.
Brad from Tennessee, thanks so much for your call. Yeah, I think Scott uh, w- would agree with you. He mentioned earlier that he thinks the general, you know, product was a little bit better this week, a step up uh, from uh, what you come to expect from AW. I still struggle with the, the emotional connection to some of the characters, but that's not to say I don't appreciate it. Well, maybe if you had Charles the Butler come over and buttle, then you would know emotionally he's maybe, really good at that. Maybe. Best wrestler working right now. Best wrestler in the world. God, it's it's a tough question. Um, I mean, I can think of a lot of people who I think are all very, very exceptional at what they do. Um, I yeah, you mentioned earlier. You said Phoenix. I think he's one of the best. Um, super exciting. Yeah, Phoenix. Like is, he he's one of those guys that you could just turn on the match, right? right? Like he could someone who hasn't seen wrestling or especially live. If you were to go live and go like, all right, so what is this? Right. That guy would just amaze you, and I think you'd cheer and yell and be in awe. Right. He he has that uncanny ability to just pull in anybody. Right. And be exciting to them. Yeah, I think. Uh, um, I, I I think I mean it's it's tough to argue against like somebody like Cesaro, who I think is just absolutely incredible mm-hmm. and just so good at what he does. Because I feel like we tend to. When this question comes up, I think we all tend to go to like the who are like the big champs, the guys that are like tent poles of their companies. But I feel like probably the best wrestlers in the world are people who have never been champion <laughs> um, mm-hmm. or have rarely been. I think Kevin Owens is exceptional when when he's on Kenny Omega, arguably one of the best of all time. Like um, when is that? You, you, everything before we got to AEW, according to most people. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like apparently they didn't have a lot of talking segments in New Japan for wrestling. Yeah, there's that. Um, or the, it was they they couldn't understand. It was a different language. It was, yeah. <laughs> um, I really love Adam. Or there's Cole. a lot of construction noise going on in the back, and they're like, <laughs> "I guess he's saying cool shit." Right. I don't know. Um, I really love Adam Cole. I really love Pete Dunn. I know that he's young and hasn't done a ton, but good God, every match he's in is exceptional. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's a big question, best in the world. There's a lot. And you know what? There's a lot of people that we don't... Obviously, we haven't talked about a lot of New Japan guys, who I'm sure people that... Listeners who are They're more, all injured now. <laughs> that, that, that everybody's that injured. They're all... They're hurt. Sure. But I'm um, sure, like, you know, obviously, we all going to have a bias for the guys that we like from the companies we watch. So there's also that. But it's a well, big sure, question. sure. But that's also what gets us watching, right? Right. Like, of course. I, I tune in every so often to New Japan, and I, I certainly like Naito. I think it's cool. That was one of the reasons right. why I was excited to go see that match against yeah. him Jericho. But it... It still wasn't enough where I'm like, I'm going to keep following it. Right. But I liked seeing him the, the, the few times it did. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely with what we're watching and what we'd like. Right. MJF, I think is yeah, one of the best wrestlers right now for sure. Yeah. Because he's got the full package and he's not afraid to get booed and he's just, he, he, he knows how to get the most out of every moment. Daniel Bryan. Daniel um, Bryan, absolutely. He hasn't lost a step. It's it's nothing. I mean, there's storyline and what they do with them right. aside. It's like Danny Bryan's still clearly just one of the best there is. And damn it, I'll say it. Question mark and Josephus. You should really be going and watching him. Absolutely. Hey guys, it is Gilbert from the Beria, and I have a message for you. The message is battle panties. Battle panties. Battle panties. <laughs> All right. Have a good week. Gilbert Short. You know what? I, to- I told him in the Discord as we were watching <laughs> Limit Shaber, I will forget to bring this up. I was like, I will forget to mention it. And I definitely did. So I'm glad he called. Uh, if you're not in the Discord, we have a lot of fun. Uh, the past two pay-per-views, the Discord has been really active. It's, f- it's like getting to hang out and watch it with your friends. And it's more personal than Twitter. Get in the Discord because it was a ton of fun. And Gilbert Short uh, Short brought up to me that it looked like Cesaro's pay-per-view gear looked like um, sexy lady panties. And he, uh, <laughs> he, he, he coined the term battle panties. Uh, although he did say that somebody, I can't remember who it was now, but some, a wrestler had brought that up previously at one point in history. I don't care. I'm crediting it to Gilbert Short, our very own Shorty G. Um, God damn it. Do I love the term battle panties? It's a great term. Uh, I love it. I'm glad that it was said. I'm glad that it was uh, one-upped via Anderson by saying it thrice on the phone. <laughs> um, I am super bummed that I, I rarely get to watch wrestling live. 
So I miss out on the in in real time right. Discord chat. Yeah. Yeah, you're you I see missed it this and weekend. you guys are having fun and I get to I, like I chime in later. It's right. like, "Oh yeah, this thing in response to that." And it's no one gives a I fuck. I do I like, do no like one. it cuz you can reply to a specific comment and it's like you're replying yeah. to comments throughout the evening the day after or the next or like later on it's like but also this and we're like yeah scott we move past that that was hours ago no but, one gives a fuck anymore old man but it, it's still very entertaining and uh hashtag battle panties for life hi guys this is Jalen from the bay area and my question for the week is i was wondering what announcer is your favorite who just calls a move like what type of move that they call is like your favorite like when Morrow will like say like uh Alistair Black's um was it Black Mass like whenever he says it that just that's my favorite whenever he says it, it just sounds so extreme and intense and it gives me like goosebumps so I'm just wondering what your guys' favorite is thanks so much have a great day Thank you so much for your call. I think it's a first time caller, if I'm not mistaken. I don't recognize the 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 name or the voice. Could be wrong. I didn't catch the name. I think he said his name was Jalen from the Bay Area. Yes, Jalen from the Bay Area. Thank you for calling. Sounds yes, sounds like a first time caller. Um, favorite call by an announcer for a specific move. It sounds like is really right. the, the, the questions. Um, I mean. Like there's, I feel like there are a few that are like I have become iconic, um, and it might not necessarily be a move, but Jr. just screaming Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, Stunner. But did he? But would he scream Stunner? Like I'm trying to think of what he would say when he would hit the Stunner. Uh, no, you're thinking of current commentators that go Oh or Boom or Oh, they make noises instead of actually you know what? calling out things. I'm gonna I'm gonna say I love. Samoa Joe right now trying to get the Glasgow kiss over by always going, oh, give us a kiss. Like, I like that. He also might be reaching over to Tom Phillips. And <laughs> give us a kiss. Being, he just, sometimes he just needs a smooch. You look at this commentary table right now, and if you see anyone more consensual than me, you point him out right now. He used that one in proper context, though. <laughs> like that one, he he was right. That about. one, he went to a seminar. He yeah. went to a seminar good, and he learned. Good, good. He doc. He spoke with Doctor Shelby. But yes, absolutely. Uh, Jr. would yell stunner. But yes, right. g- give us a kiss. Is yeah, it's, is it's Joe good. doing some really solid work? I uh, there. I do love. I love. Yeah, I also love Morrow doing Black Mass. I love Morrow doing Super Kick. Uh, when he would just yell super kick oh my god like he would just sell it at it whenever it came out of nowhere i know that's common because everybody in nxt does it uh but i still enjoyed that by the way quick sidebar uh big show paul white needs a morrow cam for when he does commentary that's just oh. gonna be fucking covered in drool that's um, just gonna be amazing it's gonna you think there's gonna be a wet zone like a splash zone like at sea world <laughs> Yeah, he's going to take over Wipeout for John Cena. They're going to go, gonna, well, this guy's way more in tune with this show than everybody else. They're going to have to build him a chamber pod just to keep everybody safe from COVID. What's Big Show's thing going to be? He's going to be a commentator. He should be listening to this question. Um. All right. Uh. Well, who? Well, who's his? who's going to be his favorite wrestler in the AW uh, roster? Uh, uh, Cody. Cody's going to be his favorite wrestler? So Cody's moves, does he still call it? Yeah, he calls it Crossroads. Crossroads. Well, oh, what that's else is he? Be a very spit filled one. Because, but, but I feel like Excalibur always yells "crossroads" when he hits it. So, what's well, yeah, but Paul White's bigger than him. All right, got it. There we go. So he's gonna say, he's gonna say, "I'll see you at the crossroads, crossroads, crossroads." And if you get lonely, he's gonna sing the whole bar of "Crossroads" from uh, from uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. That's what he's gonna do. Oh, I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> Well, there's no better Britney Spears movie than Crossroads. All right. There it is. That's better. Nailed it. This is why we workshop things in comedy, all right? By the by, I didn't get to the theory of uh, like what I think Big Show's purpose is going to be, so I'm just putting a pit in that. That's Great. probably going to be discussion for next week. Or right. we could, that could even be a bonus episode where we talk about the what we theorize it could be. All right. Well, um, uh, it might be 
by the time that bonus episode comes out and can through our current schedule, it might be not very topical. But we'll be able to talk about it next week. We'll know. We'll, who, knows? who knows? Just wanted to address that that I forgot and I want to make a note for myself. Fair. But I, I think one of my favorites is um the sequence that Gorilla Monsoon would call with Hogan. He got the big boot. Right. Oh, he got him. And he's coming up with a leg. I got him. Yeah. It, like that was always so fun because it wasn't specifically like big boot leg drop. It was, he kind of said it in the same way every time. Like there's the foot, there's the big boot and he's dropping the leg. One, two, three. He got him. That was right. to me, like one of, one of my favorites that I think of is, is gorilla doing that. And also just acknowledging when anybody got hit in the bread basket, which I know is <laughs> not a move, but still fantastic. Thanks for the call, Jalen. Hey guys, it's Johan Pena. I just wanted to uh, give the hotline a call and uh, um, just express the excitement of the possibility of New Japan Pro Wrestling coming back to Access TV. They're in the process of uh, possibly working on a deal to bring it back. Hopefully it happens so I can watch New Japan again. Uh, we'll see what happens. Thanks, guys. Talk to you guys later. Thank you for the call, Johan. Uh, agreed. I, I think uh, any any platforms, any streaming devices, being on Access TV is just better because it's just easier to watch. I've definitely tried messing with the app previous times, and that's one of the other things that kind of hinders it. It's like accessibility. You, know, you don't want to go into a certain room that has a device. So you do this and log in and then go on a thing, and then it's like, oh, now I can watch that show just want to be able to watch a show as easy as possible so hopefully new japan indeed gets back on access tv hi everybody this is mask llama and i have no idea what i was listening to today that made me think of wwe slam city uh but i did it was a claymation show from the 2011 i think uh featuring uh the wwe wrestlers getting regular jobs and it just kind of made me think about the WWE cartoons in general. And then I realized I couldn't think of a good question to ask you all, so I thought of a mediocre question. Scott, have you ever thought about showing the kids any of the WWE cartoons? Have they seen them? Do they enjoy them? Ah, uh, feels kind of weird asking about, like, I don't know, the kids. So just cut this last part out. You know, y'all have a good day. Bye. Mass Llama, that is a very sweet question. I, 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 you know, I said to Jake, like, no, 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 you don't have to cut that part out because I get it. I, I get the the apprehension, but I, I hear the sweetness behind it because it's I'm coming into their world and I'm going like, here, let me share stuff with you. So have I shown them wrestling cartoons and done that? Uh, I, th I think you could say I could because I showed them some dynamite last night. Um, but have we watched Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling? No. <laughs> Because uh, I don't have a VCR in the main house, so they haven't watched it yet. But Slam City was fun. That was like the most hit and miss show. Like one episode would be super amazing, super cool, and then one would be terrible. Uh, but no, I, I, I've i never thought about it, but they're currently out of like a cartoon phase. They're now into like the heavy dramas. So now would be the time where I'd show them probably Legendary, the John Cena <laughs> trauma wrestling movie like i love that that's the jump <laughs> like that i think that's sort of i'm trying to think of like what else would be in that alleyway right now of, i mean legends I, house that shit got very real <laughs> i watched it again just recently i watched uh, it all again that show that's got fantastic. some it's got some stupid moments but it's got some priceless moments yeah. especially now that we've lost yeah uh, a, few a few of the cast members yeah young rock is probably gonna end up on the table here soon like right yeah i can just imagine one day my girlfriend going like hey should we all watch young rock and she then just so, like slowly turns to me because it's like because you want to watch this right right and i know i'm gonna i know my default answer in my head that i don't want to say to just crap on the mood if everybody wants to watch it sure yeah but, but my answer would be no i read his biography he was boring up to the age of 25 so <laughs> If you couldn't write any good stories into his book, I don't think the show's going to be any good. Who's more condescending than me? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the call, Mass Llama. 
Hey compadres, it's Mickey Bell here in Gibraltar and I just wanted to say it was a lot of fun watching Elimination Chamber and talking to you guys on Discord and getting reactions in real time. That was a lot of fun. Uh, sorry about, you know, spoiling some things for you, Jake. My feed was a little ahead of yours. Won't happen again, promise. Um, but yeah, very interesting times heading into WrestleMania. I've been saying for weeks now I don't know where this is going and it seems like they threw another curveball in there with Miz winning the WWE Championship. Uh, very happy for him though because he was last champion 10 years ago and he's been a company man working very hard and he deserves it but we'll see how long he has that title for because i think he's probably going to be a transitional champion we'll see if lashley wins it this coming week or if drew wins it in the next pay-per-view or mania i think that's probably what they're going for to have drew mcintyre win the title back with a crowd and get that reaction at wrestlemania I think that's probably where they're going. A couple of other things were confirmed, which I was very happy with. Edge versus Roman Reigns, a match we thought we'd never see, and we're getting it now. And I do wish they'd pull the trigger on Bianca and Sasha. We know that match is coming, but oh, this is a slow build, and we've got another month of this. And I just wish they'd get rid of Reginald as well, because oh, it just it's dragging the whole thing down. And one more thing, Asuka. Put some respect on that woman's name. She is getting sidelined. She is the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, she is the Raw Women's Champion, I should say. And she is just getting sidelined in this whole Charlotte, you know, Rick, Lacey Evans storyline. I just don't care. I just want Asuka to just be a badass. I think she should just go around and attack the entire women's roster and say, you know, respect me. I'm your champion. Just do something exciting with her. You've got her there and she deserves it. Anyway, thanks once again, guys, for another amazing show. Take care of yourselves and catch you next week. Mickey Bell, always great to hear from you. And yes, thanks again for hanging out with us in the Discord. You don't have to apologize. You spo she spoiled something by like one second. And I was like, oh, no, Mickey's ahead of me. Um, and it was like literally a few seconds. You don't have to apologize. That's how the internet works. Um, one demerit. Ah, <laughs> uh, one yes. discord demerit. <laughs> oh, a dis to Mickey Bell. A dis a dismerit. One dismerit. There, yeah, there we go. Um, uh, yeah, uh, he's he's feeling uh, the mania hype. Uh, I do agree that it does seem like maybe Miz is going to be a transitional champion. So that McIntyre can win it at in front of a crowd instead of defend it in front of a crowd. Who his opponent is, I'm still not sure about. Maybe it is. Maybe it is just Lashley, and it's as simple as this. It's as simple as Lashley versus McIntyre at Mania. Yeah, you think you would just throw in Lashley in the chamber then to win it, right? But to make that, it's like, oh, he beat he beat Miz. All right, but yeah, you know, it, maybe they were just. Maybe they just bailed on the money in the bank plans and were like, listen, we're not going to be using this this year for anything worthwhile. And, you know, let's just get it out of the way so that it's not lingering by the time we do this again in three months or however long it is. You think they bailed on money in the bank plans when Otis won it? I don't see at any point where they bailed on plans of having Otis winning it. I think they I don't know what you're talking about. They bailed three times for one briefcase. <laughs> Is what I think. They bailed once on him, and then they give it to Miz, and then they had Miz cash in. They bailed on that second time, and like he still got it. And then they bailed once again. I think now because like ah oh, fuck it, let's just make him a trans transitional champ. Well, speaking of money in the bank cases, I think Mickey brings up something important too with Oscar that you know she should be doing this. She should be challenging. I say you've already fought all these women on the roster. You won this title by pulling down the money in the bank briefcase, and inside was the championship placed in there by somehow knowing a combination of it, Becky Lynch, go meet this new baby and spit mist in its face. That's what I say. Oh, that, that's, shit. Yet another miss job that baby. for the spit mopper. Yet another job for the spit mopper. It's going to be getting a lot of work cleaning up after that, wiping that baby's mm -hmm. face down. Challenge thrown down. Spit on them babies. Um, I don't, by the way, I don't think you misspoke when you said Asuka is the raw women's championship because quite frankly that's true she is the championship because they have not done anything to make that feel important um and yeah i agree she needs to go on a tear she needs to just start tearing through everybody she needs to turn heel um or she needs to just not care she needs to stop being polite to people that's what it is she can still be a baby face in that sense but no more tagging with people no more putting respect on other women's names just annihilate everybody turn her back into the monster that she was because she is in my opinion 
the best woman on the roster at any given day. Um, and yeah, do that. Gentlemen, it is Ryan from Atlanta. Long, long, long time. No talk. We'll not get into family matters this time. <laughs> I was listening to your discussion about prior world champions and their sad reigns and what you would have changed. Christian's reign has still bugged me for 10 years because it was even sadder than what you recall, Jake. He didn't even hold it for a month. He literally held it for two days. Oh. He won it in April at Extreme Rules and then lost it two days later at a SmackDown taping, which I guess technically aired on a Thursday, so technicalities, then he had a four-day reign in his first run as world champion. Oh, my God. Even worse than the fact that Edge helped him win the title the first go-around is how he won it the second go-around. He won it because Randy Orton kicked him in the balls at Money in the Bank a couple months later. Right. Because they had a, if he gets disqualified, he loses the title rule. So he gets the title back by another technicality, only to lose it a month later to Orton at SummerSlam in what was admittedly a great match, but still, two bullshit ways of winning the title, two bullshit reigns, never really even defended the title much in the second reign. I don't even recall him defending it once in his second reign. It all just led to, you know, one more match series of events following that. Yeah, I don't know. That still bugged me. All right. Thanks, guys. Later. Ryan, bringing up great points. Yeah, I, I, it, it is worse than I remember it being. That was a reference to a question that we got last week, I think, of uh, title reigns. That if we could rewrite them or redo them, what would we do? I will argue, tooth and nail, I love the way Christian won the second championship. The, the ball, taking the balls? Yes. I fucking love that. That he, okay. I think he spit on Orton, right? Like they right. were having this to match and it kept being teased like, if you if you get DQ'd, you you lose the title to Christian, and Christian is an amazing smarmy dickish heel, right? And he also always gets hit in the balls. Like you watch Christian matches galore, like you know, it's always about the balls, and I've no one works the balls more than Christian. <laughs> except for maybe Lars Sullivan. Um, I forgot, I forgot that by the second reign he had turned heel, that he was a face for the first one, and then a heel yeah. for the second one. I forgot about that. So with him being heel and then Orton getting so mad, he kicks in the balls and then Orton immediately goes like, God, no, what I do. Right. And Christian smiling, but in, in pain. pain. Yeah. I love that because the, as we talked about with the three way for the U S title, it's like that didn't fit the right pieces into the sure. right spots for who should win this. But Christian getting it on a technicality and screwing over this guy because he made him so mad. I love that, but it didn't last because that SummerSlam match was in LA and I was so excited for it. And Christian lost. And right. It's like, you can't get your break this guy. So had he, have we seen that now with like a Sami Zayn? It'd be perfectly in character because that's who Sammy is. Right. Sammy's going to get you so riled up to lose your championship on a technicality and then get out of the rematches. That was yep. the thing that sucked about Christian. It's like he couldn't get out of the rematches or politic or do something to hold on and maintain for as long as he could to lead to that match, which was some crazy no DQ hardcore match. Right. Um, where then Orton gets to just beat the ever loving hell out of him. Right. To our amusement. But Ryan does bring up solid points and thank you for the history on all that. It is appreciated. Uh, and that does it for our hotline this week. Thanks to everybody who calls each and every week. Once again, 747-666-5606. It's on all of our social media, which you can find at Compadre Show, at Compadre Show on all social media. And uh, every time we post a new episode, it's always in the episode art there, as well as it's at CompadreShow.com, where you can find the shop, support the show, snag a t-shirt, snag a mug, snag a face mask. Um, and, uh, you, you know, tout your podcast pride by buying a compadre show, uh, item or a dragon wagon radio item, or just an original design. There's some designs at the shop that aren't pod specific. You can enjoy that as you heard, uh, previously the discord is a fun place for you to hang out with us and chat. It's completely free. It's just an open community. You can find the links for that also at compadre show.com. And lastly, we Lashley. I, I, I waited. I, I gave you the moment. I was curious. Um, uh, lastly, you can <laughs> it's also not my find, joke. <laughs> oh, it's not your joke. Who's is that? Jay Washington's. 
Uh, yeah, he did it once, and I did it for years. So um, I think so. Uh, lastly, the point I was making was the you can also find a link to our Patreon at CompadreShow.com. The Patreon is the best way to support the show each and every month. You're getting tons of additional shows. We have ongoing series uh, for a mi- for just five bucks a month. That's nothing. That's like a dollar. What is that? Thirty three dollar, thirty three dollar, something like that a week. You get the weekly pre-show, Scott and I just hanging out, shooting the shit, catching up before our weekly recordings for five bucks a month. For 10 bucks a month, you get everything. Absolutely everything. Two fifty a week. Um, you can literally buy nothing in the stores with two dollars and fifty cents. It buys you nothing. Maybe something in the brand new BK dollar menu. Those little uh, cheeseburgers look kind of good. But other than that, nothing. But you can get tons of weekly shows here from Wrestling Compadres. You can get our a watch along Wednesdays. You can get WWE Encyclopedia. You can get the Rumor Mill. You can get Better Healer Face. Just this past week, we did a Better Healer Face all about Sami Zayn. You want to hear how much I love that man and hear me just fanboy over Sami Zayn for an hour? Then guess what? We've got an episode for you. Um, so much great stuff uh, each and every week, all over at our Patreon. Please be, please consider becoming a Palski if you enjoy our show. It really means the world to us, and your uh, your your dollars go a very 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 long way for us. Absolutely. And thank you to anyone who's supported over time. And thank you, most of all, to our current Patreon Palskis. Uh, and w- each week we give you a retribution name. So if you thought about it, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to join up yet, because what do I get other than a bunch of bonus content and everything? Do I get a retribution name? Yes, you do. So we have another one to name here. But first, let's thank all of our regulars here. AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary. Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, Alice Raider, Andrea Beeler, Ballista, a.k.a. Blue Balls, Big Stevie Fool, Brad from Tennessee, Daniel Puerta, a.k.a. Knockers, Gilbert Short, J.D. Monteith, a.k.a. Moeller, Jumbo Peppa, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, Mexican Stallion, a.k.a. Seabiscuit, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone. Noe Cruz, a.k.a. Control. Paisley Darts, a.k.a. Bullseye. Pete Garit, a.k.a. Rhymes. Tim Bemis. Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz. Tina Keys, a.k.a. Lockup. Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid. Viani, a.k.a. Knuckles. And Zach Ayafuso, and thank you to our new retribution named Christine, aka Fury. Oh, Fury. Classic. Yes, because the the book and the film Christine, you know, by Stephen King oh, and I John get it. Carpenter, respectively. Uh the car is a Plymouth Fury. Well done. Well done. So it's Fury. F Y O R E E Fury. <laughs> you made that so much more complicated than I needed to be. I love every second of it. Man, when we name everybody, do we just stop saying their real names? Which then undoes the value of having a shout out in the Patreon because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna sh- give you a shout out, but we're no one's gonna know who you are because we have renamed you. I feel like it's maybe next- we do that once a month. I don't know, and yeah. then if people go like, say my name, yeah, okay. it's the next natural progression. Thank you so Keep much to all of, of here. Uh, all of you patrons. Again, please check that all out at compadreshow.com. That'll do it for the week. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Lloyd Bacon. And hey, check out me, you, and 30 other men, uh, another fun wrestling podcast that I do where I watch all of the Royal Rumbles in their entirety with my better half and brand new wrestling fan, Alexandra Hoy. Uh, those are really enjoyable. Uh, we're in the back half of those. We're finishing up that show here. Uh, we just pulled 1995, I think is the next episode spoilers. Um, it's a, that's a pretty important uh, historic rumble. It's the first rumble ever where the number one slot won the whole thing and uh, really fun, super fast paced <gasps> repo rumble. man. Yep. Repo man. It's also the only rumble where the intervals were only one minute. So it's the fastest Royal rumble ever. Oh, that's interesting. All right, well, yeah, be sure to check that show out. I've listened to many an episode myself, and I enjoy it. Maybe, uh, was it uh, Brad and I will go like, ah, the history. No, Jake, remember the history. <laughs> yeah, people are screaming at me for sure, but eh, it happens. But that's part of the interaction, right? That's yeah, absolutely. Don't step on the computers or Zoosh. And you can join the Discord and correct me. 
but I'm wrong. Exactly. And and Alexandra's in there as well. So, well, check out Dave Made a Maze, a feature film that I uh, play a role in, as well as WWE's John Morrison. Uh, not U.S. champion, loser. Um, but you can see his wonderful abs in the movie, of course. So check that out. It's super fun. It's available on uh, all streaming platforms. Uh, and if you want a DVD or Blu-ray, or you just want to figure out another way to watch the movie, hit me up. I'll let you know. I, I turned on my Twitter today. It's very exciting. Um, as well as on your mark. Damn it. I work hard trying to make jokes and they can't all just be centered around Braun Strowman and Lars Sullivan. They venture out into other venues and on your mark is one of them. I'm very proud of it. I love the show. It's uh, there's a podcast available on dragon wagon radio where each and every week there's a deep dive, a discussion on a topic or a person in wrestling. I love the Conrad Thompson podcast, but done in a much sillier off the rails way with Marky Extreme, a backyard wrestler and his protege Skeeter Skyflyer talking about these things. And this week is Riho. So if you want to hear all about Riho in ways that you wouldn't expect, check that out as well as go to uh, youtube.com slash on your mark show where you can see a bunch of great shoot interviews with wrestlers uh, that go off the rails and are super silly. If you think between two ferns for wrestling, this is what you're going to get as well as like a being the extreme uh, that's a being the elite parody. There's all sorts of great fun stuff there. So be sure to subscribe, check all that out, tell your friends, have a good time over there. Hey, Scott, before we say goodbye to the people officially, can we play a, a really stupid clip from the latest on your mark that I absolutely love? I will always welcome these. Sure. All right. Well, this will be it. We'll play this and then the episode will be over. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll see you next week. Here is uh, one of my favorite stupid things amongst many stupid things said by Skeeter Skyfly on On Your Mark. Listen to that show. We love you guys. We'll see you next week. Growing up, David never wanted to become a wrestler. He always wanted to be a state trooper. That's so cool. I also love Star Wars, but I don't think I'd want to be one of the state troopers. I think I'd rather be Duke Skywalker or Chewbacca. Who would you want to be in Star Wars, Marky Extreme? A state trooper. You are so fucking stupid. That. It's excitement! It's Dragon Wagon.